seeking power over those that oppose me. Unspeakable crime, murder at midnight. A deal I made, a life I had to take. Someone I love once held so tight. The screams will follow me. Cries of my ancestors said, Go away. A part of the dark creation My desires performing incantations I walk in disguise If I catch you, it's your demise Shamanism of my religion, summoning spirits Manifesting myself and changing my flesh A nightmare to behold I'ma make you part of the fold The skin of a man, the soul of a predator The change is complete, this thing I become
No. Welcome. Ooh, Monday morning, huh? Monday. Should be good. We got some people get in the chat here today. The impromptu things are just something I'm doing because why not? I got some things I got to take care of today. I got to go out of town in a little while. And, uh, well, not a little while, but I got a, a client I got to meet with, but not for three. Well, no, I guess it's about four hours. So I got about four hours. And there are things I could be doing. But um, one of the things that, that I, I was thinking, and this is this is why I'm on today, and I'll, and I'll get to that in a second, but I was just thinking about how much it pisses certain people off that I'm still here. So I just I just can't get over that. That's that's the best part right there. <laughs> Uh, but that's not the good, that's not a good reason to be, you know, the good, the, the best reason to be on is because you guys come and you listen and you enjoy uh, the content. Uh, yes. Hit that like Josh Castro, my man. Yes. Thank you. And Anaki bro, everybody in the chat, Bigfoot, Michigan, Rob. Here, here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to let some people get in the chat because I got something very interesting to tell you. There's a few stories I've been going over last night and I got really excited. So I was like, you know what? I, I really got to get these stories out there and these encounters and they're local Texas stories. So I thought, you know what? Well, not one of them is not it's from California, but the other ones are. And so I thought, why not tell these stories and, and get them out there and then go over some developments that have happened. Uh, I got a little bit of a Hernandez Ranch announcement to make that's going to be coming up pretty soon. Um, because after our live stream uh, yesterday where I couldn't sleep, so I called him today or this morning and I, I talked to him. He was getting out ready to, to go out on the ATV and do some f uh, fence mending. But I talked to Shane and he said, hey, the, tonight, he goes, if you got time after you're done, you know, filing your taxes, which is what I got to do today, along with a few other things, he said, uh, give me a call and we'll talk. I and mean, he's going to put me on with his brother and I'm going to sit there and I'm going to listen. And then I'm going to do what I got to do. Uh, here, So that that's that's a good thing, right? We got that going on. And then the other thing we got going on is a little bit of a development uh, from these People who claim that they were vampire, werewolf, uh, coven, whatever, I got a little bit of information to talk to you about that. So got a strange email from somebody. And because um, you all know that when somebody sends me an email and tells me what to do, I'm just right on that. I'm just like, you know what? You're right. Uh, I'm scared. In fact, I pee peed myself when they sent me this horrible email. And so I just decided uh, I'm just going to hide in my house and shake. And uh, and quake in fear, because that's just kind of how I roll, right? Just a big chicken dude, right? So, so uh, after reading the email, um, if it was you know in paper form, I would have probably made a paper airplane out of it and thrown it into the trash or wiped my bodily self with it, whatever. Because uh, I don't care, all right. Um, it's not like you're sending me some legal document. I don't give a damn what you say or what you think. I mean, it's just like, you know, I'm going to say what I'm going to say. I'm going to talk about what I'm going to talk about. And people aren't going to dictate to me the show or the tempo of the show or the direction that it heads in. Even if you are some sort of immortal creature that, of the night, I don't, you know, don't really give a crap. Um, and in fact, if you are a vampire and you come into my yard or into my house, I'm going to punch a hole in your chest. So that's what's going to happen. So um, just giving you that advice, don't come to me and tell me how to do things. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And so that's another reason why I'm defiantly here today. When somebody tells me they're happy, uh, that I'm not going to be talking about them or whatever. Well, guess what? You're the new topic. Uh, but uh, anyways, we're not going to focus on anything negative. We're just going to talk about some some encounters that people have had. And I thought it was weird, the timing of a couple of these things, because somebody reaches out to me and gives me a story uh, about a month ago. Well, I'd say um, it was the beginning of March. And this is like <laughs> this is middle of April. Can't believe it's tax day. Right. Uh, so that was literally six weeks ago. It was like March 2nd or 3rd or something like that. And I know that we were in the middle of like payroll or whatever. And then this this there was this. Uh, crazy story I got. And I thought I got to remember that one, but I'd almost forgot about it. So I was going through them yesterday and I was thinking <clears throat> about doing a live stream 
uh, during the day on Wednesday, during the day early, like before Barton goes on and does his thing. Um, Cause like I said, I don't want to step on toes. I know BMR, Bigfoot Michigan, Rob, he comes on on Tuesdays and then blondes and booze do their thing on Thursday. And so, uh, you know, there, there's, there's like people doing their shows or whatever. And like I said, I don't know uh, when Matt Amps is on, Matt's a friend of mine, but I couldn't, I don't, he was on last night with brother heck who's a good friend of ours, a mutual friend of ours. And somebody tried to go on there into the comment section and say, which is the little Bree Bray account, which we all know is you from Oklahoma, uh, Ike. So you can quit acting. He's been mentioning me lately too, because he wants to be relevant. Don't worry about these people. Um, but you, just, just so you know, uh, everybody out there, I'm sure Matt probably knows already, whatever. There was nothing uh, said that was ill uh, about you, Matt. Planet 412, you did a great job last night with Brother Heck with the interview. And Hector's a, a friend of the show and friend of Matt's. Go check it out. Go check out the show. I watched a little bit of it. Um, I caught about half hour of it, and I had some things I had to do. But, uh, yeah, it was. I thought it was a pretty good interview. I, you know, I haven't been able to watch a whole lot. I've been getting ready to, to, to take care of business this next couple of days. It's going to be very pivotal for my company and for some other things that we're going to be doing. Um, and so, yeah, I thought it was uh, – uh, <laughs> Josh, I said uh, – you know, I, I know a lot of good ones. I, I do, but there's just a couple up there that are like they're just nasty, mean, or whatever. And little Bray Bray is his little—that's his little thing he does, whatever. Uh, and so he thinks he's like hurting my feelings or something. Well, now I probably shouldn't even mention him, but the fact that he said that last night in Matt's chat that I was said something about uh, Matt coming on at the same time as me. I'm just trying to figure out what his schedule is so that we don't step on each other's toes. That's all it is. Nothing negative at all. Same thing with. My friend there in the chat, BMR, uh, same thing with all of the people that, that are in this community. I don't want to be on the same time as people. It does happen. It will overlap or whatever. But I figured, you know, right now I'm just kind of doing whatever and I'm doing the day side. And so Nellie's asleep and I woke up because um, I had a weird dream. Um, and yesterday, me and her both had weird dreams, but they weren't bad. It was just like something was going on and I couldn't. And I woke up and then we were trying to remember and we couldn't remember what it was. But um, so so there it's not like some sort of spiritual warfare dream or anything like that. But, yeah, I woke up. I usually go to bed around uh, six o'clock, maybe in the morning, sometimes even later, sometimes earlier, depending on I've had a long day. And I'm always up by 11 or so or noon. And then I'm off the rest. Of the, I'm going up and all the rest of the day. Sometimes I'll take a short nap before I go to the gym about two, three or four in the morning. Here lately, it's been about four in the morning when I when I go. So. It just depends. That's my schedule. That's what it's like. And uh, so I have this uh, sort of habit of, uh, you know, that I'll fall into and I'll, I'll, I'll do a pattern for a few days and then it'll change up. But uh, today I just woke up and I was like wide awake. Like I just was like, boom, I woke up and I went to bed at like 4.30 and I woke up and it was like 7.30 or yeah, 7.30, 7.45, something like that. So Less sleep than I usually get, but I feel completely rested and I feel completely charged. And I had this weird dream. Uh, so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to stay up, you know, and see what happens because um, I didn't feel like going back to sleep. And then I thought I came and get, came into my study. And I started doing some some paperwork, you know, just not paperwork. It's like on the computer stuff, you know, uh, for this new account we got starting up tonight. And praise to God, uh, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior and the Holy Spirit that I'm able to continue to do what I do and getting work and, and we're just, you know, things are, 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 are working for us and in, in our favor, we're doing good. Everything is going good so far. Uh, problems come, problems go, right? Um, had some really productive conversations yesterday with several people. Uh, some of it involving the, the, the show and the paranormal. And then some of it wasn't, has nothing to do with anything. It was just a uh, friendship. Uh, and then of course, um, stuff about work. So things have been good, man. Things have been really good. Um, reading some of the comments here. World War Three is coming. The Temple Institute of Jerusalem ready and running out of time to build third temple. They got slot where they had to do a ritual. Hmm. <clears throat> so just looking at the comments here. See who we got in the chat. Froishan, Moon at Noon, Kevin Clow, Veronica, Ozzy Sue, Mickey G. How's everybody doing? Tane D. I see a lot of people in here today. Marquetta, 
Philip Barnes. <clears throat> so prayers from my business partner. He's been going through some stuff. He, he got diagnosed with pneumonia. Please, uh, for you to take prayers so that these uh, bad people um, will leave him alone. He's actually been getting harassed um, by one of these individuals who actually called him and told him a lie. So, yeah, can you believe that? You're going to try and talk to this dude's like my dad. You think you're going to turn, bend his ear and he's going to go, oh, okay, I've been in business with this guy for 17 years. Let me just hate him now because of what you said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, has anybody ever seen a Japanimation cartoon called Fist of the North Star? Um, there's a scene where, where, where uh, Ken Shiro, he's the, he's the hero, and he, he tells Jaggy, his brother, they're about to fight. And Jaggy is, is getting all excited, whatever, and talking a bunch of trash. And Ken just, like, cracks his knuckles, and he's like, is that panic I hear in your voice? Don't worry. It'll all be over soon. <laughs> he just proceeds to beat the crap out of him. It's like, dude, come on, man. Uh, you're not running things, dude. And you, you know, going to him and saying stuff about me was like, <laughs> it was, it was just like, but you, you're, you're stressing him out, you know. And I just, I, I lay his fear and said, dude, don't worry. There's nothing's gonna happen to me. Um, you know, they're just trying to stress stress you out and. Whatever. Thank you, Josh, for that donation, man. It's greatly appreciated and, and, and could be used at this point. Uh, but donations are not accept or not uh, not not accepted. What I mean is they're not expected, but they are greatly appreciated for the work that we do. And and I think too, though, y'all support and, and donations, the likes and the subscribes and the comments and the the loyalty is why people hate us. They come after us because they can't do what we do. Um, I fill this chat up every time with, you know, two, three, four times the amount of people that the, some of these other people do that, that are, or that don't like us, but it's because we do a lot of work. We do hard work and we get after it. So let's get after it here. It's already 200 people in the chat, but I'm letting some people come or whatever, if they want to come. But then again, this is a weird time slot that I've never really done day, day, Monday, day. So we may not have, you know, a whole bunch of people, but if, if we do great, if not, well, God bless them. They got to work. People got to work because a lot of our listeners um, have different schedules, different hours, and they'll show up eventually and check this out. Uh, I think the one we did yesterday has got like five or six thousand on it already. So, you know, the right people will watch and see what this is uh, and what's going on. So let's get started here. What happened was I got an email on Saturday. Now my wife is asleep and I didn't tell her. Um, hopefully she won't watch this. <laughs> you see, some, sometimes she does, sometimes she doesn't. She's just like, you know what, you do your thing, whatever. Uh, but I don't want to make her freaked out or anything. But this person says literally that they were a part of a vampire coven here in Central Texas. Now they didn't give me any location, and so here's my here's my thing to you. And, I, and I'm going to say this before I even get started with the story. Um, if you're so proud of who you are and what you are and what you do. Uh, why use a fake name? Why not just come out and say who you are? I would love that. I'd love for you to just come out and say who you are um, instead of giving me some some weird uh, uh, handle, um, you know, because you gave me some weird handle. Like, I know that that's not who you are. And uh, this is not the first time you emailed me because I looked in there on the email thing and you emailed me back in February. Uh, in fact, I think it was on Valentine's Day. Uh, something like that, or maybe it was it was the night of, so it would have been like fifteenth or something like that. And you had said something to me uh, about possibly give you gave me a story, which was weird, <clears throat> and it was it was a strange, it was a weird story. It was about something that was up in a tree and get in touch with you, and then now now you're saying that you you're angry, you don't like me because I came out and spoke out against your quote unquote people. Now, are you a people? Or are you an immortal being that feeds on blood? That's the question. And, and don't come at me sideways and say stupid things because, like I said, okay, you're not welcome in my house. Okay, I'm never going to throw the welcome mat out for you. Um, but if you were to manage to come and try to do something to me, well, you'd find out real quick that I got tricks of my own. So don't don't threaten me, dude. Okay, this person literally was like, you don't want to mess with us and blah, 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 you know. And I'm like, why? Because there's some 
biker gang? <laughs> it's not like your 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 vampires on wheels. Is that what you want? <laughs> We're the black widows, fear throughout the land. You know, it's like okay, well, most people I know just uh, squish them, take a shoe, and you know, uh, that's. <laughs> I think that was any which way but loose or every which way you can. It was a Clint Eastwood movie. Um, you know, so these people, they kind of, they, they come at you sideways and then told me that I'm doing the right thing by not mentioning them lately. And so I was like, maybe they want me to mention them or whatever, but I do have something to say about that. Um, and here's the thing. I'm not trying to start anything or antagonize anybody, uh, but you're not going to like, you're there's never, like I said before, there's never going to be a time or you're going to come at me and I'm going to be like, oh, I'm scared. You know, let me just do this and whatever. Uh, thank you for that donation, Kim. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, here's the thing. I got a report from somebody, and this is a, this is kind of a weird uh, story. And this one happened out near Brenham. Now, I've, gotten, I've done a lot of work in that area, in that Brazos area, um, with people giving me stories in between Brenham and Giddings. I had a couple of ranchers out there, and they, I've gotten weird reports of all kinds of stuff. But this one was on the other side of Brenham, uh, just east of there. And somebody had was driving down the road, and they saw something that was hunched down, small, like it looked small, like a ball, like a ball of fur, the way they described it. And this guy's name was Clyde. And he was driving down the road with his with his fiance. And this was just like a few months ago. I think I think it was I think it was back in like September. So it around the time after my conference. And um, somebody had told him. Uh, a person that was at the conference, and I greatly appreciate you telling them this. Um, he wants to stay anonymous, and, and he has a job with the county uh, in one of the counties. Hold on. Hmm. In one of the counties. Hold on one second. Let me call from work. Just one second. the problem of being up trying to do this stuff so he, he has a job with one of the, the neighboring counties or whatever um he didn't say exactly what his job was but he wished to not be exposed or whatever to say you know so um we just went with his what people call him and that's a nickname bonnie and clyde him and his fiance they they just they his friends uh, jokingly call him that because they're always together well me and nelly are kind of that way too we're always together but he was driving late at night one o'clock in the morning on a saturday uh, back in uh, September is when I got the story. And it was a couple months before that. So I was thinking it was like in July. And he said that they were coming back from a party. And in fact, I know it was July. I think it was like right July 4th weekend or something like that. So he was, <laughs> the dogs are playing with a, with a can. They have all those toys and they play with a the can. They love that can. Uh, but anyway, so he's driving home and they see this thing sitting in a ditch. And it looks like a ball of fur. At first, he thought it was a gray dog, almost like a poodle, because it was the fur the way it looked. But then it unfurled itself. That's my words, not theirs. And it just kind of like rolled up, like popped up, and it was standing on its hind legs, completely on its hind legs. And this, this, this encounter I thought was important to talk about because it was so bizarre. But not unprecedented here at Paranormal Roundtable. <clears throat> we do get a lot of weird accounts. And we, we always take those accounts that, that people give us and we don't they don't like shy away from the weird ones and go, oh, this can't be important, you know, because it's something that doesn't fit the norm or some kind of narrative that we're trying to spin here. And that's not that's not the case at all. Um, I'll read that comment in just a minute. So what ends up happening is uh, they're driving along and they see this thing and it's a skinny like it looks like a man, the upper body was not full of fur. There was just hair on the arms and the upper body was skinny and you could see abs and everything on this dude, man. It looked like a guy, but his legs were, were, were gray is from what they could tell, uh, like a, like a dark gray, not that smoke gray, like that black, whatever, but it was like a dark gray. Um, I say smoke grayish black is what my, my encounter of the thing looked like. This thing was like a dark gray. And it had hooves, definitely had hooves. But the head, the head was like a dog man. Everything about this creature um, was like some sort of dog man type creature. The head looked werewolfish and it just tilted its head and looked at these people. The legs, though, had this kind of curly, it was like a goat man, lower body, 
goat man, head dog man. And the eyes were red, glowing red. And this thing just kind of stood there. And it looked like it had these weird, like, uh, spikes on its elbows. Um, very bizarre. Something that you would not. I mean, it was like when, when they were t- describing this thing to me. And they said that they, they just, like, sped up. <laughs> and so I told uh, Clyde, I said, yeah, I would, too. If I were you and Bonnie, I would have got out of there real fast. And so he's like, dude, he goes, we were coming home. He goes, and he goes, I'm not going to lie. He goes, I was sober. I was sober. Now, Bonnie's had a few drinks. He goes, but I, I'd stopped drinking uh, about 11 o'clock, you know, um, and I'd only had two. I'd only had two small drinks, you know, and he's like, and it was uh, uh, 1.30 in the morning. He said, I was absolutely sober. Was like, just there was nothing. And he's like, but she was. She had. A, she got a better look at it, but she had been drinking. And by her own admission to him uh, when she was in the background, I heard her say, and they're not really listeners of the show per se. I mean, maybe now they will be, but he was like, yeah, I, I found you from someone else. And they told him, Hey, you need to give the story to this guy. He's got some stuff or whatever. He actually does know one of the ranchers though, that we have gone out to their ranch uh, years ago and have filled with some reports of what they originally initially thought was like Bigfoot. And we, we now would call that creature, whatever it is, a gugwe. Now I would like to say something about that. We really need to start just using these terms because everybody's like, don't call it a skinwalker because that's only for the, the Navajo. Oh, don't call it a Gugwe because that's only the Algonquins. Don't call it a Genosqua. How about we just say, look, if it has Bigfoot and Dogman type features mixed together from here, from now on, starting right now, let's just say that it's a Gugwe. Let's just say it's Gugwe-like. It's like a Gugwe, okay? And we'll say... You know, if it has horns and, and it looks like a, a normal whatever, then it's a goat man, right? <laughs> but what do we call something that looks like it's in between a goat man and a dog man? Now, here's what's interesting. Very interesting. If you were to go about 20 miles north or 20 miles east of there going toward Houston, you go down past Chapel Hill. There's a county road down up in there, and I can't remember off the top of my head, and I believe me, I tried looking – I had notes on this thing, and I, I don't know what I did with them. I thought this was it, and it's not. I lost them somewhere. But stuff falls on the ground, and now Martis, he knows how to open the door to my study if I don't lock it. So he opens the door, and I find my hat's taken and chewed up because Beans comes in here and grabs anything that's on the ground. So she may have sh- destroyed it. That paper that I'm looking at on the ground over there could have been it. But that's not a big deal. We'll take care of it. Um, I, I know you know about where this happened. Um, and, I, and I'm going to tell you the reason that it's important is because there was another report down in some bottom land down in there off of that county road. Um, what, what, what I was told by a guy named Tom who literally said, hey, I saw a goat man. That was how he worded the email. Now, his sister does listen to the show along with her son. And they said, hey, you need to talk to Josh Turner. And what turned them on to the show was when uh, the lady came on. I can't remember her name now. But. She came on the show and talked about in, in, a, in a town called Lexington here in Central Texas, and they drove through in between Lexington and uh, College Station. They they drove through something or Caldwell, I'm sorry, Caldwell and Lexington, and this thing they drove through it, right through it. It was crazy, and it was a werewolf that ran across the road, and it was like literally they drove right through it. So the goat man creature um, in question in this particular story is, is different than this other thing. But I thought it's only like 22 miles apart, okay? I did the math, and it's not that far, the location. It's about 22 and a half, 20, almost 23 miles. And so it looked very similar. But let's finish the first encounter. So Clyde, they're driving along. They see this creature. This thing had a werewolf-looking head. It was tall and thin like a man. And at first, they didn't know what they were looking at, and they thought it was a guy in a costume. And why was he sitting in the ditch like that? Why did he stand up when they were when, when they drove by him? But they looked, and they saw something laying in front of it, and it looked like a dead calf. But they get, they couldn't be certain because – she got the better look at it, and the driver, he he's like, I didn't see what it was in front of them. She just said it looked kind of like a calf or something, and that they didn't see any blood or anything on his face. And as they passed it, they just drove real quick. It took like a step back, 
you know, and then kind of got out of the, the, the line of sight, you know, and they were gone. The reason that I thought this encounter was interesting, not only because they drove by and saw this thing standing there, I thought it was interesting because not even like, you know, it just it was just right down the road, 20 something miles. Um, there was another encounter. And that one happened back in 2018. And I looked it up and I know the dates. It was in May, uh, which would have been, you know, you know, several years before this one. But now get this description. This guy was walking along, and what the hell would you do? This is a scary story. This story right here, what, what happened to Tom was very scary. I would have been terrified. Um, he broke down on the side of the road. And, well, he had an alternator problem. Alternator problems are the worst because your vehicle just dies, and there's nothing you can do. And you can jump start it, you know, and he tried. He used one of those jumpers, and it just got him a little further down the road, and then petered out again. He was done. Well, here, here's the problem, man. Um, it would have been a no big deal. You know, uh, he said, he goes, it was about a, a, a good nine miles hike. You know, he goes, but the thing is, he goes, I'm a runner. And uh, I, I used to run that all the time. He goes, I'm 42 now. Um, he goes, and, but at the time when it happened, and he gave me this story, you know, like several months ago. But uh, he said, I'm 42 now. So I think now he would probably be 43. So, you know, I mean, if you go 2018 to 24, that was like, what, six years ago? Um, so, you know, he was, you know, uh, do the math, 36, you know. And he said, you know, 36, 37, whatever. And he says, and I was still in pretty good shape. I was a, I was a track star. I used to, to, to run all the time. So he goes, so I just started jogging, you know, and I thought, you know what, I should have known better, this car, whatever. And he had gone uh, to a friend of his who would, was about four or five miles down the road. And so he decided to jog back that way because he was nine miles from his house. So he said that, you know, he was jogging back in the direction that he came and he hears this something like running like quickly along the tree line. And then he sees something dart in and out of the tree line and he stops and he's like, whoa, what is that? And he said it was a full moon. And he said that through the light of the full moon, he says, I could see that there was something there. And he's like, you know, and he said that it was like a, um, well, I don't know if it was a full moon because he said that it, the moon was almost full. So let I don't know. It, it, it you know it may have been full or it might have been close to. Um, so, anyways, he said by the light of the moon, I could see this thing kind of like weaving in and out of the trees. And so I stop. He goes, and I thought about it, and I was like, man, I was in such a you know a funk. You know, he goes, I'm about a mile and a half from my car, and he's like, and I couldn't get any cell phone signal, and that really sucks. And then he's like. So I'm going to go back to my car to grab my gun because I thought this is ridiculous. There's something running along this tree line here. And he said that it was tall, really tall, at least seven and a half to eight foot tall, which that is a number we get all the time with seven, eight, seven, you know, whatever. And he said that this thing, but it looked, it didn't look big and hairy like you would think of as a Sasquatch. And I, and so I asked him this question, this was just me going back and forth through emails. And I said, I said, let me ask you a question, Tom. I said, this thing that you saw, did, could it have been a Bigfoot type creature? And he says, absolutely not. And I said, Tom, why is that? He goes, because I've seen one. He said back in 1992, when he was really young, when he was a really young man, uh, and like I said, he's like 40 or 43 years old now, whatever. But he said, when I was really young and, uh, you know, he goes, I saw one of these things. I think he said he was like 12 or 13, something like that. He said, so I was a kid. He goes, and I saw one of these creatures. He goes, I was out shooting my BB gun at cans, and I had them lined up. And me and my other friend, Chris, were shooting these, these cans. And we look up. We hear a tree, like branch snap. We look up, and there is a Sasquatch-type creature. Ugh. Thank you for that donation. I don't know what denomination that is or what from what country, but I appreciate the donation. Thank you very much. And he says, make an international union of paranormal research organizations. That would probably be a good idea if you could get them to agree on the time of day. That's the only problem with that, right? And then we got Zindi Monet. Thank you, for, or Monet. I don't know how you say your name, but thank you for that donation. We appreciate it. So what ends up happening is... Um, the, he he they see this like bigfoot type creature panzer no you can't come in here nope no i'm sorry buddy look at what he looks at me come on nope this is why it's hard doing the show at the house 
He's going to start pushing on the door. There he goes. He's 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 mad at me now. Uh, it's one of my cats. So, anyways, he so he literally he uh they they both just kind of like instinctively pointed their BB guns toward this thing, and the thing knew what it was. This is a Bigfoot encounter what he had when he was a kid, and it knew what it was, and it kind of like recoiled, and then it just kind of like let out this roar as they were running away. But his friend dropped his BB gun. He said, like, Chris dropped his. I just I just kept going. I held on to mine because I thought maybe that that's would get it to stop, whatever. And so it just it roared so loud because I could feel it go through my body. And so he took off. And this would have been in the same area, actually closer to to uh, the little town that I just mentioned earlier, Chapel Hill. But he said that he was he was in, he was terrified. He goes, I just like I just dropped you know what I was doing, and uh, we stopped what we were doing. We took off. And uh, he described it as being ape-like mixed with like a man, like, and, and it smelled terrible, like garbage and urine. And so he just said that, you know, we, we were gone. We were out of there. And he said, I asked him, I said, did you ever have another encounter? Did you ever see anything over there again? He goes, well, I quit going into those woods. He's like, but he's like, uh, I didn't, I didn't stop. Um, um, he's like, I didn't stop going into the woods altogether. He goes, I still hunted. He's like, but for years I wouldn't go deer hunting with my dad and his uncle and my uncles, his brothers, because of what I saw. It scared me. And he goes, and I didn't go out back out to the woods till I was 22. Um, and he said, and a, and a girlfriend he had at that time uh, wanted he wanted to impress her, so he ended up going out in the woods and going hunting with her brother and his friends, and they just all had a great time. And um, so yeah, so he ended up kind of just slowly going back into the woods, and and so he he got over his fear. So he wasn't afraid to get out of his car, you know, but he always said it was in the back of his mind what he had seen as a kid, right? But this is like 30 years mm -hmm. later when this happened, right? So, you know, not 30, but, you know, like 20-something, late 20, 27, 28 years, whatever, you know. And so he says, dude, I, I, so I thought, you know what, I need to go back to my car because whatever this is is weaving out of the tree line. So he turns around and he starts to run back to his car to retrieve his handgun, which he was like, I can't believe I left it there. And, you know, just I had it on the seat, you know. And so he was running back and his, he said this thing began to follow, to parallel him. And he could see it. It wasn't weaving it out of the tree line now. It was just running alongside in the trees. And he goes, and I got to the point where I could see my car. And it was about 50 yards away at this point. And it was going down like a slope, a hill. And he goes, and I was running down that hill. He goes, and this thing just ran in between me and the road. And there was like these, this ditch, you know, like a shallow ditch. And there was like this little bit of clearing. And he goes, and this thing just darted out in front of me. And he goes, and then I just stopped. He's like, and I stared at this thing. He goes, and that stared at me. He goes, and my chest was like heaving. I was so, you know, I was running as fast as I could. But he said that this thing caught up to him and was right there in front of him. And he said, and it was, it was weird. And his exact words were this grotesque looking being. Those were his words. And I said, you know, I'm thinking to myself, you know, what, what is, what is this? It's exciting, you know, to hear what this is, you know, but only interesting and exciting for me, but not having to be in his situation, it would have been horrifying. And he said that this thing, he goes, it was about seven, eight foot tall. He's like, and it had the legs, the legs with hooves, black legs, uh, the upper body of a man. And these, there were these pointy, uh, bony looking elbow things, like some kind of like things that were protruding from the elbows, which I thought was interesting because this other guy uh, that goes by Clyde, him and his wife saw the same thing. Um, very, very intriguing. Uh, but the head of what they saw was like a werewolf. It looked like a wolf, right? This thing that he saw, the face that was like a bald headed man. And he said, dude, it was like the devil. You know how the devil, like the, the, the quintessential pictures of the devil, he's got like the horns or whatever. But he said, this thing had two little curved horns. It went back. And he said that, uh, it turned and it was just like staring at him. And it was it like it, it, it. There was a noise. He said that we both heard it because this creature was distracted temporarily, and we heard like twigs snapping, tree branches on the other side of the road, and there was woods on both sides. But on the other side, there was like just a little bit of woods, and then there was like a pasture, and then the side where this thing came from, it was all woods. And so he said, when he was staring at this thing, he they heard like a 
like tree branch breaking, something large moving from the other side of the road. And they both kind of were distracted by it temporarily. And the thing looked at it and then it looked at him. And he said that I could see this thing like kind of go, like it took a deep breath and just kind of exhaled. And he said that I saw the hands come out like, and it was kind of like moving its hands back and forth. And it goes, it had claws, big, nasty looking claws. And he goes, and the head, like I said, he looked like a bald headed human. He goes, the flesh was a grayish black color. Um, you know, he goes, and it looked, but not like a, a black man, like an, an African person or anything like that. No, it was like a, and it, 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 but it just, it didn't have any human features right here other than it had a pointy, like hooked nose. And he said that it looked human-like, but just way different. And the eyes were glowing like yellow. And he said, I was staring at this thing and I couldn't believe what I was looking at. He said, and then the thing made this like kind of you know, I can't do it. And it kind of a clicking noise with his teeth. And he said it was just like, uh, um, it was just, he couldn't describe to me the, how the terror. He goes, dude, I was so, so afraid. I wanted to release everything, bowels, you know. Um, he said, and I just stood there waiting for it to make a move. He goes, and I could see it heaving its chest. And he goes, and then we hear the, the noise again from across the, the road. He goes, and I could tell that whatever was over there was not a normal thing. And this thing with the clicking of the teeth and whatever, he goes, I didn't get a good look at the teeth to see if they were big and fangs or whatever. It just looked like a human, very tall, very uh, uh, strange looking. He goes, and then he goes, it just turned and ran off into the woods. And then I heard the noise again across the, the, the road. He goes, and so I just like, walked slowly and didn't make any sudden moves and got to my car. And uh, I decided to stay in the car. He goes, I got in there and he goes, and I just, it, it, I looked at my, my uh, phone it had no signal. Um, but he said it was like four 30 in the morning. And at that point he was like, you know what? It gets daylight, you know? So he, he said, dude, uh, he goes, imagine I'm just sitting there in my vehicle terrified and i'm just like looking around looking around looking around he goes and at one at one point i was staring in the rearview mirror i kept looking and i was thinking this thing's going to come out and it's going to bash in my windows and try to kill me he's like but i'm not getting out of this car and running and taking a chance you know he goes but i have my my, my 45 right there he goes and i was completely totally prepared to defend myself and he's like and so it seemed like forever you know that this this time and at one point, he goes, I heard something going across the road, like heavy footfall going across the road. He goes, and I look in the rearview mirror, and I see this large black shape go from the other side, which is where whatever it was that him and this goat man look at thing, I would say, I'll just say it, a satyr. It looked like a satyr because it had the human-like face. A lot of times a goat man reports the thing looks like it has a goat head. This thing didn't have a goat head. It had a human face, human head, which is more in line with what we know of as the, the Greek, the quintessential Greek uh, satyr, right? It was, a, it was, a, it was to them a, a minor deity. So he says he looks and, and, and he sees this big, hairy, what looked like hairy, black thing run across the road going toward the direction, going toward the direction where that creature had taken off of. And, I, and so I asked him at that point, I messaged him back and I said, Bigfoot, question mark. And he was like, maybe, he goes, maybe, because it was big and it was about the size of what I had seen when I was a kid. He goes, and, and honestly, he goes, we weren't that far from where I was when I was a kid at 12 years old that I saw that thing. And he was trying to tell me, you know, he goes that uh, he goes, my wife was is now his wife um, said that that years ago she had told him that she saw a Bigfoot going down that road. They were driving along, her and her current boyfriend at that time were driving along, because I asked him, I always ask people, if you've ever talked to me on the phone or you've emailed me or texted me back and forth, you'll know I'm gonna ask you these questions. I always say, do, 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 do you or anybody you know, have they have y'all seen something else? Has anybody else seen anything? Because that's important to me. Hold on one second. Now, I gotta get refocused here. For some for some reason, um, the goat man stories really kind of just get they, I don't know, man. There's something about them. I've never seen one. 
But even as a child, like I, that was something that scared me. Like I, I read a story from a book written by a guy named Daniel Cohen. I don't even know if his books are still in print, but one of my friends, Scott had a book and he brought it to school. And uh, it was a school where we got caught with something like that. We would get beat. And I'm not joking. It was in a Becca school. And so um, we, we, you know, would sometimes bring what they consider to be contraband. And I said, hey, man, can I take the book home and read it? You know, and to me, I was a voracious reader. So I took it home and I read it. And like I said before, probably on the show or on somebody else's show, I didn't read a lot of books about monsters and stuff like that. You know, I kind of liked Godzilla or King Kong maybe a little bit. I guess that was the extent of monsters. Werewolves and stuff like that really didn't interest me. I didn't believe in them. So I kind of thought it was just hokey bullcrap. You know, that's kind of how I was as a kid. And so Goatman, though, for some reason, really, it bothered me. It really scared me. It was like weird. So anyway, what ends up happening? Uh, to Tommy decides that he's it's best if he stays in his car. And uh, in the rest of the night, he said, dude, I heard some sort of weird shrieking howl come from the woods. And then I heard something that sounded like a He's like, the only way I could describe it is like, uh, it sounded like a donkey mixed with like a wolf mixed with like a monkey. He goes, I couldn't tell you what it was. And there were these weird noises and stuff. And so I said, do you think that maybe that whatever ran across the road was a Bigfoot? And maybe it actually helped you because the thing ran into the woods. And he says, yeah. He's like, I think it was just there. And he goes, I'll tell you this. He goes, my honest opinion. And this is what Tommy told me. He said, I think that when I was jogging, there was something on the other side of the road that was stalking me. And it just happened that this other creature was kind of doing it at the same time. And I said, you really think that? He goes, I believe that I was being stalked by two different things. Um, so that's a, that's a really, really creepy story. But when you look at the close proximity of this uh, creature that he saw, like you, if you look at the close proximity, like look at a map. I mean, I did, and I was sitting there going, like, I was going over this story, you know, um, with a couple of people on the team here, and I, I was like, well, look, look at how close it is. I mean, there's people they see this creature stand up, and and it, but it has a wolf head. I mean, but the body, like the body, everything, like the legs, everything was identical to this satyr-looking creature. Um, that was seen on this county road by this man. And I can only imagine the fear he went through. He said, finally, there was no traffic on that road. I mean, it was like desolate. He said about 6.30 in the morning, um, somebody's driving by and he waves waves him down. And it's, you know, he doesn't know the person, but it turns out that it's a mutual that he shares with somebody that he knows. And it was his former neighbors. And this guy turned out to be related to them by marriage. So he says, hey, 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 you know, and so the guy stops, you know, and, you know, these are country people. They live out there in this, you know, whatever. And so he gives him a ride into town. And uh, and so the signal when he gets to a certain point, he can use his phone, which was almost dead at that point. And um, he said there was just a dead zone where he was at. And so he he makes a call. And then, you know, his wife's like, yeah, I've been wondering where you were at and blah, blah, blah. And so they come out there and they get the vehicle. But her encounter, which she had with her ex, was was really bizarre, too. Um, they were driving along and they were arguing, which is probably why he's your ex. <laughs> so, so they were driving along and they were arguing. And he said that, that, that he was just like he told he stopped the car and told her to get the heck out of his car because they were whatever. And right then they see this thing come running at an angle toward his toward the driver's side, you know, whatever. And he just gunned it. And this is a gravel road, right? And so they he gunned it. And uh, the thing got really close to the vehicle, and close enough to, like, smack the car. And then they took off. And they were like, what the hell was that? Immediately they stopped arguing. There was no more. Uh, Josh says, what the heck? My super chat won't go through. It, I thought it, did, it thought it did, unless you were trying to do another one. I don't know. Um, but it, and, and I appreciate it either way. If it doesn't work, that it doesn't work, but I appreciate the, the sentiment. So it was running at an angle toward them and they were like, it was crazy, man. Mm -hmm. And he said that, you know, she, she was terrified. She saw this creature said it was like a nine foot tall, huge, and about four foot wide. And it was angry for whatever reason. And, and it just came running out at them because they were stopped sitting there yelling, arguing, whatever. And she's like, I'm not getting out of this car, you know? And, uh, 
she was just like, I don't care if you punch me in the face. I'm not getting out of this. I'm not getting walking in the, in the woods or whatever. You know, you're crazy. Um, but it was crazy, man. Like, so, so what ended up happening, they took off driving or whatever. And then years later, you know, they were talking about this. This is what she told Tommy. Now, this is why you get more stories, even though people are like, well, you know, that story is secondhand, you know, and that story is blah, blah, blah. No, dude, that's, this is how you get stories. This is how you make connections. And it's one of the biggest problems with the uh, community. And one of the biggest problems with people who, uh, you know, this community is just rife with these kind of people. They don't, well, well, I didn't get it secondhand, so it can't be. How are you ever going to connect the dots and able and be able to make um, the threads, you know, connect the threads? I mean, you can't, you know, you can't unless you do this. I mean, this is what you have to do. You have to connect the dots, right? See that? See, I can do it. That's what we do. And you know how you can do it? By doing that, by talking to the people. Please, if you are a researcher or you're a podcaster or you're an author, and I have friends who do all these, right? There are some friends that are on TV. Do yourself and everybody else a favor and ask those questions because one story leads to another, leads to another. Next thing you know, you're pulling threads left and right, and it's creating a tapestry that gives us more. It gives us more. And the more we can add to that database of knowledge that we have, the more that we can get closer to maybe kind of thinking, hey, this could be what's going on. And you get a plausible theory that we can postulate on. Do you see where I'm going with this? Anyways, enough preaching. Um, so what happened is she, she, they were at a party at a dinner party for, for his, it was like a baby shower, I believe. And they were, they were eating dinner or something, not a baby part, uh, what a baby shower. And they were eating, eating dinner and whatever. And he casually just brings up that they saw Bigfoot a few months before. And he said that it was his sister's uh, baby shower. Her best friend was like, where at? And when he said it was near this county road, and I, like I said, I'm going to get this county road. I'm going to try and post it and go to Paranormal Roundtable group on Facebook. I'm going to try and post the county road, the name. Of course. So anybody who's listening, you'll know what I'm talking about. And I'll just say refer to live stream. I didn't even number this one. I should have. We'll go back and number it. And we'll try to, I'll try to remember that. But I got a lot of things to do today. So what, what ended up happening, they were like, she was like, I saw something over there too. But it was distinctly different because the one they saw was all black. Uh, the one that Tommy saw run behind his vehicle, which he thinks may or may not have been a Bigfoot because it was big and it ran fast because it could have been anything. But his thinking was it was a Bigfoot. It, it, it was chocolate color, like a brown, a deep brown color. And it was broad daylight. And it was dragging a deer that was like it was dragging it through the barbed wire fence. And they stop, they look and they see this like thing with the same situation now here's what it looked like in the head it had like this protruding forehead it looked like a neanderthal mixed with a gorilla that's what it looked like and so they were like dude this is the same creature this is the same thing except a different you know different member of whatever with clan or whatever you want to call it so very weird and so in those woods you know it's like you have literally like goat man running around or satyr man, whatever you want to call him and Bigfoot. Right. Um, and then on the other side of the, the highway, if you go down, you know, 20 miles or so on the, on, on the other side of, of that highway. Um, and that, that's like where 290 it, it turns like this. And I, the, the highway that goes straight past, I don't know the name of the highway. Um, I can look it up on a map, just look up Brenham. You'll see it and then look up Chapel Hill and look up all that area. Uh, Washington on the Brazos where the Texas Declaration of Independence was signed. Uh, that whole area. And I've gotten Goatman stories from that state park right there, that Washington on the Brazos state park where the Texas Declaration of Independence was signed. And I've actually told those stories on the show. So it's interesting. We've gotten Dogman and Goatman stories in that area. And then, you know, if you go to Giddings and on the other side of Giddings, which it wouldn't be Giddings, it would be on the other side of it. It's another town. We've gotten stories of Gugui going way back. At least that's what I call it. Um, and it's it's so it's so ridiculous. It's so crazy, like how much activity, you know. Um, I haven't gotten a whole lot as of late, but yeah, the, the, over the past like 20 years, there's been a lot of weird activity that's gone on back and forth. I'd say even longer than that. One of the uh, reports I got of a dogman type creature 
going between uh, – let me look at the map right now. I can see how far this one is from there. Wow. Literally just got a story right now. Hmm. Uh, first, of, first of all, let me see here. So I can't remember the name of that little, it's a little bitty town on the map. And let me see if I can find a good map here and I will tell you the name of it. Uh, it's so small, but oh, come on. Why does it do that? Don't do that. Don't do that to me. Come on now. I can look and I can tell you. Might help if I put my freaking glasses on, huh? I'm always trying to pretend like I'm younger than I am. Uh, let's, uh, this map's not going to tell me because the town's so tiny. Um, let me see if I can find a map with these little bitty tent, little bitty uh, spots on the road. I might be able to, to, to put the, put the town on there. Wow. I opened it up right to getting right there. It's a little bitty spot, and I'm trying to remember that, like where it's at. Ah, well, anyways, there's these three little bitty towns, and, and they're like basically you drive through them, you'll miss them. And it's on the way to Houston. And so um, it, it, I'll, I'll find a map with the name. There's three of them, like right there together. And one of them has like an antique store right there on 290. Anyways, right down the road from... Chapel Hill, like like it's like right down from there. There's like these little, there's like this little bitty town or whatever you go through, and like I said, if you blink, you'll miss it. And uh, that particular uh, spot, before you hit those like three little spots, there's a, a county road right there. And if you if you were to drive through there and you see that county road, um, it's like you take a right, and and I think you'd be heading like going south. Uh, you, you'd be going like southeast. That that there's a county road right there where we got a dog man story from 1992, where one of these things was laying in the road. And I just, I just read it because it was in one of the files and I, and I didn't flesh it out or anything, but I, all I remember is reading it and it was County road, something or another. Um, and I looked on the map that was yesterday and it was after I'd gotten off the live. And I said, that's interesting because we were, you know, I was looking at, at stories from that area. Uh, and so I thought this is crazy when you l listen to this story. Um, <clears throat> the guy that gave us that story, uh, his name was literally Guy. That was his name, literally. So I say it's kind of funny. The guy that gave me that story. Um, but this dude, Guy, he tells me that he was driving along with his mother. He was taking his, his mother. There. It was broad daylight, too. And there was this dog like laying in the road. This was in 1992. Unfortunately, his mother passed away in 1983. She was undergoing treatment for cancer, and she she was in bad health. And his mother was like barely conscious. She was just like you know just slept all the time. She was going through chemo, and of course back then it was they don't even they didn't have nearly the treatments that we do now. And so his mother was was uh, was dying literally, and so he had to slam on the brakes because there was this large dog which he thought was he thought had been hit by a car, and he didn't want to run it over again. Um, and it was laid out in the middle of that county road. And he said that when he stopped, his mother lurched forward and got caught on the seatbelt and it hurt her, you know. And so he was, he was, oh, are you okay? Are you okay? He's like, I'm sorry, there's a, there's a dog in the road. And before he could even finish his sentence, the guy said that this thing stood up and it kind of was like, like, like in a runner stance and was staring at him, like had its head tilted, you know, to the right, looking at him and his mother. And then it just decided to take off like a bolt, you know, and it was off into the woods. And, he, and I said, why do you think it was laying in the middle of the road? He goes, I have no idea. You know, I messaged him, you know, and uh, it was just crazy. But I, re I read the, the correspondence because I had read that one before. 
And so I found that one in there, and it was a brief correspondence between me and this man. We didn't talk on the phone or anything. Um, but that was an interesting story. And I, But I do remember him, though, back before we did the live streams and stuff, he was a listener of the show. And I had gotten that story a, a way back, you know. But it was such a brief encounter that you kind of sit on those, you know, and you don't put them in a one-off file because it's not a one-off. But you, you know, those kind of I well, I saw it on the side of the road type thing. You just kind of put those out, you know, out there in a file, and you wait until you get more encounters that you can say, hey, they're either something weird is going on in this particular area. Um, because this is East Texas we're talking about. We're talking about East Central Texas, kind of leaving Central Texas and going into the East. And there is a ton of reports in this area. And I kid you not, it is popping um, like crazy. You get so many reports over there. And so, dude, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where when he, when he saw that creature and, it, and his, his mother started crying, and he goes, I couldn't console her. And of course, she's not doing well. And he goes, and I knew that the cancer was was not, it wasn't, she wasn't going to beat it at that point. He goes, I was hoping against hope, but it was just, you know, and then eventually they just stopped. It, her quality of life was so bad and they just let her, you know, live out the rest of her life with, you know. Um, but she started crying because it was like just, you know, she wasn't even like, she was so out of it. She didn't even really register what was happening. But she just was in pain and her chest was hurting, you know, and uh, he, he says it really angered him. The creature like this thing that was laying in the road pissed him off and it pissed him off because, well, you know, it made him slam on the brakes and hurt his mother's chest. And she already was she had, had cancer, you know, and so he was just aggravated, you know, and he just was like, you know, I just always remember that. Like this creature was just laying there on the road. He goes and part of me wishes I would have ran it over, but I had a bigger vehicle. I would have. Um, so he was pretty, pretty mad about it. Um, but you know, when, when you stop though, and you look at the close proximity of these encounters going around this area, um, which is just kind of like, you know, you know, I think it's all in like a little 50 mile radius, you know, in that area, like a little circle. Um, and there's a bunch of encounters that happen there. Uh, a lot of woods, a lot of areas and places for them to hide. So, you know, that's probably why, you know, uh, but I'll tell you this, you know, when you put all these together and you're looking at one particular area and you're saying like, wow, there's this goat man looking creature. There's a, there's several Bigfoot reports that, that went on, you know, people seeing one that another person says they saw it. Another person says they saw it. And they're telling me about all these Bigfoot reports that, and then you have the people who saw what, looked like a dog man with hooves. And now going back to that one, I asked Clyde, I said, let me ask you this. And this dude was very, very straight. I said, look, are you sure that it was hooves? I mean, it, it could have just been because, you know, they stand up on their, on their paws and they're, they're like big giant foot paw looking things. And I was trying to describe it. And he said, no, man. He goes, no, it was hooves, man. He goes, I, I, mean, I got to look at it. My wife got a really good look at it. Um, but it was a hoofed animal on its hind legs. He goes, but it was a, it was a wolf's head. Now, I asked him this, and this, you know, and this may sound kind of weird or maybe I was reaching or something. But one of the things I, I, I proposed to him, I said, what if it was wearing uh, like a, a something, like a headdress or like a, you know, because of the other report that looked just like it, but it was a satyr. And he says, no, man, there was no mask. It was a wolf, like a were It looked like a werewolf with hooves, with goat legs. And, he, and, he, I, I, and he, so I, of course, I asked him, what do you think it was? I said, I think it was a demon. Absolutely. just a, It was a demonic entity. That's the only way I could describe it. I said, but it was it looked physical. He said, yeah, oh, yeah, it looked physical for sure. He's like, but it was just demonic. You know, it looked very demonic or whatever. And so I asked him, I said, did anybody else in that area, you know, I, I messaged him and um, I said, does anybody else in that area ever tell you of anything weird or anything like that? Now, there again, he says, yeah, years ago, my great aunt, my great uncle and my great aunt were driving along and they saw this weird gorilla, weird looking thing. And I said, gorilla looking like a Bigfoot. He goes, yeah, but not really. Um, the face of this creature that they saw had a protruding snout. And I thought, ah, 
Now, there is your Gugwe right there. And so I asked him, I said, did it have a tail? And they, he said, you know, I don't know. Let me ask and, and find out because, because you know, my dad and my uncles and everybody, they've told that story before. And he said, you know, th there's people that, that remember because his aunt, great aunt and uncle were deceased now. He's like, but I think that there's people that can, can in the family that are still around, you know, that can tell you, you know, what this is or whatever. So a couple of weeks go by and I hear from the guy. And then I go and I look and there it is. He, he gave me a full on description from some of his older family members. Uh, in particular, his aunt and uncle said that they remembered the, their great uncle and aunt telling him, telling them that story when they were young. The creature had a very uh, ape-like pointed head, was very Sasquatchy looking. Um, Sasquatchy, I just had a word. I don't know. We just made it up. I don't know. It's very Sasquatchy looking. And then, but it had a, a, a protruding snout, a short snout. The muzzle was kind of like it protruded out. And the ears were kind of on the side of the head, not like a human's ears or an ape, you know, but like pointed up, but ape-like. Looked very ape like. So, what is that? Is this the wolf ape, like the ones you hear about in California that Shane Michael Crisp was talking about? Uh, on Blondes and Booze, if you missed that show with, with Blondes and Booze, uh, folks, I gotta take care of something. I'll be right back. I got something going on here. Hang on, don't, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. But uh, yeah, it was. Uh, uh, in my shirt, it says MMA on there in case you can't read it. So, you know, people are going to be like, he was wearing some weird shirt of a rhino. What is that? Is that is he satanic? He's a satanic Republican, but he's Republican in name only. What is his, what's his deal? So yeah, I just got to tell people. So, what we what we deal what we're dealing with, folks? What are we dealing with? And, uh, tell me in the comments what you think, because uh, some weird stuff going on in that area, um, off of Highway 290, and all those little towns out there in between, um, and and you know, going from Brenham to Houston, that whole area. Just look at that area on the map. We've actually covered some reports of weird creatures in that area on a show we did. And I can't remember the name of it. And Anthony, if you're out there and you're listening, do you remember the name? Maybe you could look it up for me or one of y'all could look it up for me. Um, somebody from the team. <clears throat> we covered uh, uh, on the podcast episodes um, a, a bunch of weird, high strangeness, strange encounters with weird entities. And one of them, I was—I remember it was like a golem-looking creature or something. I don't, I don't know. It was really weird. Th there were some really bizarre dogman encounters in that area. Um, some of them that looked just downright bizarre. So it didn't really surprise me to get a story that somebody had seen a goat man with a wolf's head. You know, like it's you know, or a dog man with a goat man's body i guess, i don't know how, whatever however you want to say it it's like something in between the two um i don't know 
So it wasn't like shocking, like, oh, oh, but it was interesting. Um, and but you go back to that episode and it, it the some of the reports we got were from that area. So, you know, we have an entire like whole file on that, just that area right there alone. Now, switching it up a little bit and, and moving toward the, the direction of the Hernandez Ranch, which strangely enough, somebody that just messaged me. Um, was somebody whose grandfather actually he just literally texted me and I don't know this was he texted me when did the live stream start An hour and 15 ago yeah so it would have been right toward the beginning of this um for this live stream he was somebody who um who lived not lived but he worked I guess and his grandfather bought land really close to that uh to the Hernandez ranch area and when we started talking to him one day, we figured out that he actually, his grandfather bought land like close to that. That's where it was, very, very close to it. And so there were reports coming out of that area. Um, now in that area, we got dog man, weird reports, you know, a lot of that, just, just a, bit, a few Bigfoot reports coming out of there too, in that particular area. And of course you have what people call the Gugui. I think that's what this thing is, a sort of in-between looking creature. Um, and then this is part of what I call the Dogman Triangle. Not, not to take away from Aaron Deese or his Dogman Triangle or anything like that. Um, he wrote the book about that, the Dogman Triangle. I thought it was pretty good, interesting stuff. Uh, but there was so much around it. Around Canyon Lake, yeah, Anunnaki, bro, yeah, even though you're from North Texas, you know. Um, Canyon Lake. Now we had one out of Canyon Lake. Some people were out there. That's like a river that runs from it or whatever. Uh, and they were on a, on a, in a kayak. I talked about the story on this other show that I did and it was, they were, they got into an argument and the lady was screaming and these dogman type creatures, or I think it was one of them actually just came to the shore and got their, got its attention and started like kind of paralleling them and decided to just go out into the water and start swimming toward them. And so they just started paddling. And luckily, there were other people that were coming to the edge of the water. And it kind of, if I remember correctly, the creature turned and, and got out of there. I remember that guy. And um, his real name was George. I remember that. I talked to him. And he said, you can use my name, whatever. But I had already gave him an alias. But yeah, his name was George. Um, he was a Hispanic dude uh, that lived on the other side of Seguin or something like that, if I remember correctly. But they were out there having a day, and his girlfriend was in a bad mood and started arguing loudly with him in a disagreement, uh, but attracted the attention of one of these creatures. But that whole area, you know, from Wimberley, if you go up kind of like to San Marcos and then go Ranch Road 12, and you go across to Blanco and you go back down. Uh, I've covered reports out of there, and like I said before, my colleague and friend David Weatherly's covered reports out of that area. Uh, Ken Gerhardt, all of us have looked into stuff in that area. It's really heavily wooded. And I've taken Bettina out there with, uh, with Maddie and showed them that area. And, uh, they're, they're both, they were like, wow, this is heavily wooded. I mean, there's a lot of woods there. That's why there's stuff there, you know? Um, yeah. And there's my friend from Bejar, Bejar County, big for now. We were talking about the Rod Nichols. Hey, Rob, what's going on? Uh, we were talking about, is it Bexar? Is it Bear County? Because people call it Bear County, um, but it's, it's it's actually Behar. Uh, but, uh, yeah, when, when you uh, look into this area and you go from, from San Antonio to Bandera to Kerrville, oh, my gosh, dude. Some of the reports I gotten out of there were bangers, dude. Like the Kerrville, the dude from Kerrville, who, who the first one, there, there's multiple who told us that their family member was werewolves. And I'm not even joking. This guy was like, I was in the, I was in the garage and my uncle's friend started changing into something. We were just watching and they were lifting weights. And he says, check this out. And it was just like, <laughs> and he was just like scared to death, him and his friend. And they just took off as this thing was uh, doing like pop and lock, you know? And he was like this dude who was, a, like, well, he, his, in his words, a devil worshiper started turning into a freaking werewolf. And uh, Anthony and Tony can tell you, this guy told all three of us this, that this really happened. This was happening. And before that, our friend Dax used to live there. Now he's living in like Finland or something because um, that's originally where he was from. Uh, he had told us that he had seen a goat man looking creature that looked like the quintessential Baphomet. 
which was crazy. He was like, it was running around in the woods and it was chasing him and his friend. Um, that, that was a report. Me and my brother, we started this together. So me and him and Scorpion and our friend Willie, who passed away, Willie was our friend that we used to do the art contest based on Willie Williams, um, who's an African-American guy, uh, God rest his soul, who died of brain cancer. And uh, he was he was actually part Creole from Louisiana, really good guy. And so we all went out there. Right. And then I remember going out there and, and wandering around at the edge of these woods because I wasn't going to go deep into those woods. And there's a couple reasons. One is because it's full of ticks. Um, and the other reason is because I didn't want to get killed by whatever the hell was out there because we heard this weird noise and it sounded like something was being attacked. And all of a sudden it sounded like a bunch of coyotes were, were being killed. And I'm not joking. My brother, Scorpion, and Willie were all there. And our friend was there with, with another one of his friends who was actually from Georgetown, which is right outside of there. That's where the werewolf church happened. Um, one of our workers years ago that told us about the werewolves coming out of the well. So you, and if, if you're into this kind of thing, and you're, you keep then you keep your eyes and ears open. And Rod being in the chat and DMR and you guys, y'all know, you're researchers. You, you, you're, you pay attention when people talk about this stuff. People say, well, I've never heard none of this. Were you asking? Were you paying attention? And when somebody told you a story, did you go and get the information? Because we did, okay? So we drove out to Kerrville, to that area, okay? And this isn't even the area we were going to talk about. I'm going to get to this other story in a minute here. Um, so we go out to Kerrville uh, back in 2000, uh, I want to say 12, something like that, which would would also be the year that the next story it came from, but not the same place, but I'm going to tell you a story uh, right outside of Wimberley. We've talked about Wimberley before. Uh, these towns, they have the beautiful places, right? You go there in the daytime and you're like, wow, it's stunning out here. It's beautiful. And, and, then, and, and then even at night, if you're out there camping and there's a bunch of people around, you're not afraid. It's kind of like the LBL, right? Uh, I've talked to Barton about that and him and Martin Groves, they go out there and it's all good daytime, but they all say the same thing. The same thing people say in my particular Dogman Triangle at nighttime, well, the atmosphere changes, and it's like you're being watched. And you can only imagine what the early settlers, the German and Czech settlers, were hearing and going through at night. Now, the Comanches roamed this land at one time. We've talked about that. And they did not spend a lot of time in that area, even though there was a lot of water there. And it was uh, it was beautiful and pristine. They would drive, they would ride their horses through there, take a drink, and then get the hell out of there because they believed that it was cursed. You know why? Because there's a giant, there's a small mountain, giant hill, if you want to call it whatever, um, right there uh, on the river, right outside of Wimberley. And when you that area is full of caves. And I believe that these things come out of these caves. And I don't care what anybody says. You're not going to convince me otherwise that that's not what's happening, that these creatures don't exist. And they're not from the inner earth. Oh, believe me, I believe they are. And they come out of there. And in fact, I told the story on the show. Uh, these people were tubing, and they went down into this little creek. There was a spot where you climb up to the top, and you put your tube in, and you shoot you down into the river. Um, and that that particular spot, a Bigfoot type creature was in the water and tried to grab one of these people while they were in the water. And it, they, it, by their own, what they said, with their own words told me that they came out of like this hole in the water. And it was like, you know, but people have called these things water apes too, because they love to be in the water. They come out of these holes in the water. Uh, it's really, it's really crazy, man. But let me see here. work stuff. Hold on one second. I'm going to get into another encounter. So what ended up happening? Uh, in 2012, I got a report. Uh, somebody was driving along and this person just told me this the other day. They said that they emailed this to me back in 2019. I didn't see the email and I apologize. I, I, I didn't see it. Um, but anyways, what 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 was seen by this particular individual, his name is Mark. He was driving along with his best friend, and they were, and this there again, it's not like 
they were drunk or whatever. They were coming from a bar. Okay. I'm not going to lie about that. And he said, I'd had a couple of drinks, but we weren't smashed, dude. He goes, we drink his words. He goes, we're rednecks. We drink all the time, man. He goes, we're always drinking. We're hillbillies, whatever. You know, he goes, and we're driving our truck. He goes, and me and my friend are talking or whatever. And he's telling me about this girl he's into and whatever. We're talking about music. Just, just, you know, what do you call that? Um, uh, what is it called? Um, banal conversation. Like just, you know, nothing important, whatever. He says, so we're just sitting there talking. He's like, and then he's like, my friend's like, look out, look out. And so they start to slam on the brakes because this creature crawls spider-like, you know, out into the middle of the road and it lifts up its head. He goes and he sees these weird looking mouth full of teeth. And he told me this. He said, Imagine now. This was a message I didn't talk to him, but we messaged back and forth. And he says, "Think of Baraka uh, from from Mortal Kombat." And I said, "Oh yeah, we've heard this before. Yes, we have Baraka. We've heard that that being called that. We you know if you if you don't know what Baraka looks like, go look it up. It looks crazy, scary. Um, you know, of course, it's just a video game, right? That somebody just made it up from a video game. But damn, dude, the thing looks like something straight out of hell." And so him and his friends slam on the brakes and they see this thing um, in the middle of the road and they weren't, he goes, look, we weren't going that fast. He's like, and we were coming back from a bar and we were pulling into, into Wimberley um, and we were, we were, you know, where we were headed was going through Wimberley and then going on to the other side of Wimberley. Um, you know, so he said, dude, it was like, you know, and I say this was probably where they were at, the spot where they were at. Um, not even 30 miles from Austin, probably. I mean, it was like you you would be like, as soon as you leave Austin area, you go to Dripping Springs and you go to Wimberley and all that, you're out in the woods, okay? And that's the Blanco River right there. And so it's it just crazy, man. And I said, how close were you to the Blanco River? He goes, well, we were real close. It was like right there, pretty much on the river. He goes, this thing was not far from the river, maybe 200 yards. I said, do you think it was probably coming from that? He goes, yeah, because it looked wet. So there you go. Really, really strange. When we when we talked to Yehola Tiger, who's up in Oklahoma, he's a Cherokee, uh, a real Cherokee. Not these people that just claim they are. They're like, I'm a Cherokee. Yeah, sure you are, whatever. Um, yeah, and, and I'm the Pope. But the point is, is that, that you know, he was talking about these creatures grabbing people and drowning them in the water. So, you know, hold on one second, folks. My wife makes me drink this a drink that's best if you just drink it really fast. It's not something you're going to want to sip on, believe me, folks. Particularly sour today. It's really healthy, but it's rough. But anyways, moving on. Yeah, Rod, I would say that too. He says, I feel like we need to pay attention to these underground caverns. Um, I think, Rod, you need to come on the show on Friday if we decide to do the show on Friday. I don't know if we're going to do a Friday show or not yet, but if we do, you need to come on and we can talk about some of these cases in that area. I think what we need to do too is um, uh, go out there. We need to head out there. Once we can get the money together to get the equipment or whatever, but like I said, I'm waiting to see what these douchebags next move is. So I know how to proceed. One of them has been harassing my business partner. Really, really dude. After I announced that he was sick and he needed prayers, this guy's got pneumonia. This guy goes and starts harassing him. It's, it's unbelievable. So yeah. I, and he was very distraught about it yesterday. And I was talking to him. And um, he was just like, you know, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm probably going to take legal action to get this guy to stop. Um, so 
Which reminds me, Anthony, if you're listening, you need to call the uh, our guy and see what's going on. I uh, don't want to put our business out there, but that needs to happen ASAP to make sure that this person has received whatever. And, uh, yeah, Josh Castle says, everybody's got Cherokee in them. I'm Cherokee. Dubon says, good to see you, Wolf. Good to see you, too. I'm just dealing with people's bull crap, but we're going to start just Anybody that messes with us and comes at us, we're just going to start taking it legally. We may have to spend half our money doing it, but eventually people are going to get the message just to leave us the hell alone. We're not the drama channel. I'm not starting it. We're not like we don't enjoy it. It's, if you guys, if, you, if you're somebody who watches the show regularly, you pay attention, you know what's going on. I cover a lot of reports, and it really insults me when people say, oh, they're all they're doing more drama than, than talking about cryptids and ghosts. Are you kidding me? Do you watch the show at all? Or are you just like key in on certain things and then be stupid and go and take that and run with it? Because it's 11 11. Uh, so, what you uh, look at the show, pay attention. You'll see how much work we put into this and how hard we work at it. So, for them to say these ridiculous things in the comments or whatever is just like on the comments of the videos when we drop them, they'll say stupid things like that. Um, yeah, that's just people who aren't paying attention. They're just half-ass listening, and then just, just, just they're going based on what enemies say because, you know, those people. And a lot of these people, uh, thank you, Kathleen. She says, love you, Wolf. Keep up the good work. I'm going to put that comment on there. You know, a lot of these people, they're, it's, they're just mad because they're lazy and they want to grift. Actually, Abe C. has made a video about it earlier, talking about this dude, and I know who he was talking about up there in Oklahoma running his mouth. Nobody cares about what you have to say anymore. More oyster mouth. Just be quiet. Your, your, your show sucks, and everything you talk about is stupid and boring. And that's why you're mad. You're mad because you're subpar. You always will be. As long as we exist, you'll be irrelevant. There you go, Peace Frog. 2% drama, 98% great content. So going back to what we were talking about, speaking of the content, here we go. So I know it's a Monday uh, morning. Everybody's, in, you know, in, enjoying loving Monday, right? Everybody loves to go back to work Monday. Me personally, I can't stand Mondays for one reason. That's when I get all the reports and complaints of what our guards did or didn't do uh, from the weekend, starting Friday evening until Monday morning. They're like, ah, somebody stole the bicycle. Now, granted, they left their bike unlocked. And put a big sign on there and that said, F you homeless guy, I dare you to take it. And they took the bike. It's your fault. And you're like, oh, that sounds completely accurate. Uh, would you want us to pay for it? How much was it? It was worth ten thousand dollars. Really? Because you could put like some money on a nice car for that. Now they like to ride their bike and be in front of people when they're driving. They literally want to get hit, and now they can't because you let somebody steal their bicycle. Calling bullcrap. Um, yeah, so Rita says, I'm on vacation. Good, good for you, Rita. Enjoy your vacation. Uh, Monday got better when the live notification appeared, Miller. And if you guys like the daytime lives, let me know because I'm up at this time. And if I get my early morning stuff done quickly, and then I got a few hours in between where I can do other things, like you know, before I go to do other things, and my, my appointments and meetings are later in the afternoon, which they have been lately. Because I've been wanting to sleep in. But guess what, folks? That doesn't happen. That does not happen. I do not sleep in. I always say, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to sleep in. I'm going to sleep in because I'm going to set my appointments later. And guess what? I'm always up same time early. Only now I've been getting up even earlier because I'm sleeping even less because I want to get more done. And one of the things I want to get done is doing the show. Uh, so the daytime live may just be something we start doing for a while. You know, I've been working shift work since I was a kid. And I'm not joking. I got my first job when I was 14. I was shoveling horse shit. And I'm not joking. Um, and now my, my detractors are going to go, now he's shoveling bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Real knee slapper there, boy. <laughs> I beat you to it, little punk asses. Uh, but no, here's the thing. I've been working my whole life. And I've worked day jobs. I've worked swing shifts. And I've worked nights. And then I've worked entire weekends 
just burning the midnight oil. Um, the, the, the longest I ever stayed awake was four days. And you start to go kind of crazy. And that's completely sober four days because I had to work. And I did start to feel like I was losing my freaking mind. But I had to. When I started my company and there was a lot of theft and vandalism and there was no way in hell I was going to let go of what I had, um, you know, because I worked really, really hard to get to where I'm at. And and so I was starting my business out. And finally, I talked Scorpio into coming and coming back to work for us because he had been working for another company. And uh, thank God for that, because between him, Bones, my cousin, Bo, uh, our friend, Philip, and then um, uh, my brother, we put together a team and we. We banged it out, and we built this company. So shout out to all of those gentlemen for that. Yeah, these people, though, they're lurking in the chat. They'll watch every single thing I do. Then they'll run back to their uh, little hovel and their piss-poor excuse for a channel and then say a bunch of nasty, mean things. And with Larry power, because he's, you know, they're going to be like, oh, he's, he's, he's a, the new guy attacking. Let's, let's all follow and do what he says and whatever and blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah, we'll see how that works out for it. Curtis says, when Wolf ever gets to sleep in and actually sleep in, y'all know the world is upside down. Curtis knows he's talked to me at different times. Not, we're not related, but we might as well be. He's really close to me, man. He's talked to me at all kinds of different times of the day and night. He knows, man. And uh, Anunnaki, bro, he's been down here and visited. And I think when you came, it was late. You know, you've been all times of the day and night. You know, there's Scorpio right there. Yeah, he says, thank you. You're welcome, brother. Yeah, I appreciate it. See, here's the thing. And I'm going to say this really quickly and then get back, back into these other encounters. Um, when you have people who have worked with you and for you for decades and have been a part of your life, uh, Scorpio has been my friend since 1999. One of our workers who just recently quit and went back to work at a different company because he got a great job, great, better offer. Big Jim, I love you. You know, I love you. Sometimes you watch the show, sometimes you don't. But uh, shout out to him. Big Jim Ostrander, great guy. Been working with me for years. And funny because he knows Joe Breezy and he knows Lyle Blackburn. But he knows him because he used to own a, own a bar called Texas Mist. And it was the big heavy metal scene. So that's how he knows Breezy and he knows Lyle Blackburn is through that. But uh, he thought it was interesting that, that you know, I know them for, for the show, uh, from the show. But uh, so Jim, big Jim, tough guy. He's half Taiwanese, a really cool dude. Um, worked for me off and on since 1999. Same thing. Uh, you know, one of my other guards, Russell, been working for me since 2010. So the proof is in the pudding. You worked me for 14 years, 20-something years, whatever. Why would these people work for me this long if I'm such a bad guy, if I'm this horrible person? They wouldn't, right? I've known people that I've been friends with since the mid, early, mid-90s, whatever, still friends to this day. Um, one of my friends lives on the Ivory Coast. I've known since 1991. You know, you know, he lives in Africa, but we've been friends for a long time. One of my friends who lives down in Colombia. I've known that guy since 1990. We met years ago. Another one of my friends, he's Italian by, by, by heritage, but nationality, he's Argentinian. I met him in 1989 when we were kids. Still friends, still friends. So if I'm such a bad guy, I'm not burning through friends. I mean, people are like, oh, he's fighting with his friends. No, I'm not. Th those are my real friends that I've had for years. My friend Squid, I met him in 1997. Uh, Jack, I met him in 1998. These are people that I've been friends with for a long time and, and just forever. You know, me and Willie were friends since 1997. Um, you know, I got friends. My one friend lives in Converse, my friend Greg. I met him in 1993. Or I'm sorry, 1991. Another one. Um, and then we met another mutual friend of ours, uh, Jesus, in 1993. So we're still friends, all of us. I mean, you know, and these people, they're black, Hispanic, Asian, white, whatever. We're still friends to this day. One of my kickboxer friends that lives in Hong Kong, I've known him since 2011. And we're still, we still talk regularly. I mean, th that tells you right there, like these people have close friendships with me, close relationships, you know, and we're not fighting or arguing or having any problems at all, period. So, you know, is it me? 
that's got the problem or is it them? These people that are saying all these crazy, ridiculous things, you know, the proof is in the pudding. You can, they, they can't deny it. And I have personal relationships and have friends with people for a long, long time. Um, so it's not me. And in fact, some of those friends have reached out to me and commented like, who are these people? Cause they don't know you like we do, you know? And I'm like, that's the thing. They don't know you. You know, my friend from Argentina was telling me the other day, he's like, they don't know you. We we know you. We know who you are. We know the real you. Um, and these people, you know, they're just, they try to insert themselves in my life and, and become uh, something that they don't belong. It's just, they're not a part of it. I try to keep it separate and say, look, you know, and they just, they didn't, they weren't having it. And then they want to tell me about my show. Nope, not going to happen. So, Here's what, here's what we're looking at. The the area around the devil's backbone, right? Um, interestingly enough, there's a devil's backbone area um, that I heard Martin Groves talking about the other day on, on Barton's show. It was it was a few, few episodes ago, I guess they were talking about it, that's in the LBL. Well, this area that I call the Dogman Triangle, and when I first heard that Aaron Deese was writing that book, I actually thought that that's what he was talking about was that area. But he was talking about a bigger Dogman Triangle, like from Austin up to Dallas Fort Worth and then down to Houston and across. That's probably about right. Because the whole that's that's better what he's talking about an even better triangle because that's pretty much it. The dogman triangle of Central Texas that I'm talking about um is this area that I just spoke about, that crawler creature. Now think about this. There's a lot of caves in that area. There's a couple really big hills, small mountains in that area. Um and you you gotta wonder you got to wonder, like, do these things come from these caves? Do they come from the inner earth? Uh, my theory is yes, and I'll give you another example of why I believe that. There's a guy named Tyler, and he was actually walking. Actually, he was what we would call a prowler. Um, he's like, he's a 46-year-old man now, but when he was younger, he said when he was in his early 20s, he was just kind of just going from place to place. And there was a campsite right there on the Blanco river. And he decided that he was going to um, just, just go from place to place and wander around kind of like the guy, Franklin, who decided to camp on the other side of, of the devil's backbone in Blanco, where he heard the weird Apache war cries that were coming from that Valley, which I believe me and uh, Bettina and, and Maddie, they were with me and my family. And of course it was Anthony, uh, uh, Nelly and, and Tony, but those two were our guests and we had driven out to the devil's backbone and I was out there joking, laughing. And, and, you know, we hear this weird noise coming from the Valley. I don't know what it was. Um, but we all kind of got freaked out, we got in the vehicle and left. Uh, not right away though, not until I yelled back and then we, something made a noise again. So we just decided cause the girls were getting kind of afraid or whatever. So we took off, but, uh, yeah. Um, this guy, he said, you know, I was I was walking through that area. He goes, and I know I was cutting through private property, and I shouldn't have. He goes, and I was at the base of this large, uh, super large hill that was like a small mountain, and he described it. I knew I know exactly where it's at. He described it to a T. It sits on private property, but he said he was walking through there, and he goes, and I hear this like kind of skittering clicking noise. He goes, and I'm, I'm like toward the base of this thing. He goes, and I'm just kind of hugging the outline of it as I'm walking. And he goes, and it was late at night. He goes, and it was early spring and it was cold. I'm not going to lie. He's like, it was in March. He's like, I think this, I think he said this happened in 2006 or something like that. Not 2006, uh, 1996 or something like that. Um, but he was young and it was like the mid nineties. And he said that it was like, um, I think he said it was like 18 or something like that. So it was either 96, 97. And he said, <clears throat> when he was walking, he goes, I hear this clicking noise. The only thing I could describe it is like, you know how, when like a bug makes like a, like a, like a, you know, like, like, like on TV, they'll, they'll have like these weird, like, you know, sounds that they make, whatever. And he's like, so I hear this like kind of clicking, whatever, and I see something white crawl out of these weeds. And there was like this little kind of a marshy looking like pond looking thing. And I thought, oh, crap, I'm going to have to walk around it. And there was only like a little bit of a path where he could go between the mountain and that that pond right there it was like a stagnant pond. And he said that, yeah, like a cicada. There you go, JFA. And he said that he was walking along and he hears that clicking noise and he sees something 
that looked like it was on the other side of that pond, like it had been down drinking, right? So it gets up and it runs and it just disappears into that mountain. And he was like, oh, crap. So he's on the other side of this pond and he's starting to think, man, maybe I shouldn't be here. And he said it was spider-like, right? Kind of like with the guys that we that we were talking about earlier. Thank you, Kate, for that donation. We appreciate that. Uh, the guys that we were talking about earlier, they were saying that what they saw was crawling around the road and it looked spider-like. And it was right side, right side of Wimberley. Uh, the guys were coming back from the bar or whatever. But what's crazy, though, is when this guy sees this thing, he's on the other side of the pond. He goes, I had a gun. He goes, and so I pulled it out, and I was, like, walking with it. He goes, unfortunately, it was a little 380. It was going to do much. And I said, eh, yeah, especially if that's what I think it was. And he's like, well, what do you think it was? I said, I think it was a crawler from what you're telling me. And he goes, that's what I think now, knowing what this is. So he actually, because of the way that it crawled and the way that it moved, his he looked it up on the Internet. And so he gets on the interwebs and he looks up crawling, wild, pale, crawling, humanoid, whatever, and he gets hits. And the hits that he gets are Fresno Crawler and the Rake and some other things. And he says, he goes, but I, I read this Rake thing and it's some sort of creepy pasta thing. I said, yes, that the name of it is the creepy pasta, whatever. But hundreds, if not thousands, of people now have told their encounters, well, it's got to be in the thousands, it's got to be, the thousands of people who've seen this thing, it's not some creepy pasta. When these people start talking stupid about uh, the names like Skinwalker and Gugui and, and Genosqua, and then they say something about the rake, whatever, dude, let's just call it what it is, okay? I don't care what the origin stories are of these creatures. I really don't care about it anymore. There's a million different stories. And I don't care about the weird different names. And they're like, oh, well, that's not real because, you know, that Bubagawa, whatever, Shukanugadawa, whatever, that, that, that can't be the name, the bubblish fish eye. Who gives a crap? Call it whatever you want. I don't give a crap what you call it. It exists because thousands upon thousands of people see these, these different things like all the time. In fact, here's something to think about. Probably right now, as we speak, okay, something crazy is going on somewhere in this world. Somebody is witnessing one of these things, probably interacting with it or even getting chased by it or even possibly unalived. And then you can argue and say, oh, well, these things aren't real because because somebody says creepypasta. Uh, yeah, fine, whatever. Say what you want, believe what you want, think what you want. But let me say this. Somebody somewhere is going to tell you that they've encountered these things. And I believe this guy, Tyler, because he described this thing to a T. He said, this is what I saw. And he said that when it crawled down into the hole, the base of that mountain, he was like, dude, I just started walking across the field. I just kept going and I walked until I got to the road. And then I went back to where there was just these encampments, you know, which was a few miles away. I know exactly where he was at. And he's like, and I, cra I, I crawled, you know, or not crawl, I'm sorry. I walked down to the, to the base of the, of the river and I just set up my camp right there. And I just I sat there wide eyed the whole rest of the night. He said, I said, did you get a better look at it? Did you get a description? He said, dude, no. It was just like a pale four-legged crawler thing. I don't even know how to describe anything better than that. It was white. Um, and it just it disappeared at the base of the mountain. Um, and I told him, I said, I would, I would hazard to guess there's probably more of them. Yeah, Lee Tracker E getting eaten. Uh, that is a very real thing. People think it's a joke. They think that these things are like, oh, I see them all the time and they don't bother me. Really? Until you get close enough to want them to grab you. Mm -hmm. Th then, then how are you going to feel? That's a good... Uh, so let's see here the comments. Dorothy Metcalf says, these creepy pasta came from something, but the originator is the one that that seen it. But because it was so out there, they wrote as a creepy pasta or something along those lines. And then our Ariental, uh, what is this one? Is relatively new. They ripped off the older accounts of people. Slender Man even existed before the stories. Very possible. Uh, how do you say it? The Wachita Mountains, but there's always, there's always, um, what did she say? There's always more than one. Yep. And then Dorothy Metcalf's comment right there. Uh, let me go deal with something really quickly. I got to make a quick. Text. I don't want to be 
rude because this person is texting me. Hang on one second. It's work stuff. All right, so I'm back. So, where were we? We're talking about the rake. Okay, so what? So th th this is another story I got, and this one was right off of the Devil's Backbone, and it was it's right before you get to Blanco, which is another one of those towns that we have discussed where people get weird stories. And in fact, there was a Bear King story, well, Bear Man story, like I've said before, that David had covered, and there was a couple of them that I'd covered in that area, but not. Not on that side of Blanco, it was on the other side. And uh, so this story was interesting. Not only did someone uh, go into the area known as the Haunted Valley uh, and see a bear man looking creature chasing, and we talked about this on the show the other night, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think a couple of Fridays ago, with uh, Monica Rollins, Abe Seas, and Joe Breezy. And th this bear-like creature ran out into the to the clearing, and, th and it stood up, and it looked like a werewolf, but it looked like a bear before that. And so these people talked about that. If if you were to keep walking and go back up onto the road of Ranch Road Twelve, where from where they were at, you would see this spot where this happened. Um, and I thought it was very interesting that it was right there. If you would have just take, you just take a right and go down, and then park, and then go walk, you would go to the haunted valley. That's where you would be. Been there a thousand times. Um, it's kind of like my LBL. Like I go to the Devil's Backbone periodically. It's a lot more grown up and people living there. Like like not like it's still a lot of wild land out there, but not like it used to be. Like 20, 30 years when I first started exploring it. Um, what's crazy is that uh, people see ghosts out there like constantly. Now, here's one for you. Um, and this person, Raylene, gave me a story. She was driving down the road with her boyfriend, and this creature came up, well, not creature, a, uh, well, I don't want to say it was a creature, but it was like a, it looked like a coyote, right? Now, here's why I think that it could be skinwalker or it could be a ghost. I don't know what this thing could be, but uh, what she saw that day which was in 2008, she said that this thing, uh, let's see, hold on. Catch the chat up so I can get caught up there. So in Croatian, thank you for that, Croatian saying that. And that's She says, uh, or he or she, I don't know if you're male or female, but says, thanks, Wolf, for the subject. Um, this coyote-looking creature, and I say coyote-looking because it was made, it's shaped and just like a coyote, but it was large, like a wolf. But not not like a big dire wolf or whatever, but just it was like the size of a wolf. Uh, this happened in October 2008. And they were, it, it ran up onto the road, and it stopped and kind of looked, and then just darted out in front of their jeep. And they were driving with the top down and everything, whatever. What was so creepy about it though was they were about to make impact. This thing stands up on its hind legs. I kid you not. And it becomes what to them looked like a man wearing a coyote skin over his head and his back and everything. And they just kind of looked at them and it was holding some sort of like, the way that they described it was like a maraca, like a like one of those, you know, you shake, you know, um, one of the gifts that the Arabs gave the Spaniards and the Spaniards gave to the Mexicans. Um, and so the, it looked like one of those, you know, like it was holding like a rattle in its hand and it just kind of looked like, and it was hunched over and then it just got back down on all fours and at the last second, they couldn't avoid hitting it. They drove right through it. So, so many things were going on with that when I was listening to these people tell me this. And Bobby, her boyfriend, um, he's the one who actually reached out to me um, and said, he goes, he goes, she was driving. And uh, he made a ridiculous joke. Uh, 
But he said, I should never have let her do that because you know, she's like not a good driver. And I said, oh, come on, dude. That's kind of being, you know, sexist or whatever. And he goes, let's not have nothing to do with that. He's like, she's, she's gotten like 20 speeding tickets. Like I said, oh, okay. So she's got some tickets, you know, for uh, lead foot. But he says she drives way too fast. But he's like, I just got in this Jeep and I was all happy about it, you know, whatever. And then um, and it was used. He goes, but it was new to me. You know, and I, I thought, dude, now we're going to wreck. We're going to hit this, what first they thought was a coyote coming out of that area by the Haunted Valley. And then it turns into whatever, runs across the road. And then it stands up at the last minute. And they, then it goes back down on all fours. Like this happened. Like he said, it was like, whoop, whoop, whoop. And then tried to move. And they hit, like they went right through the middle of it. He goes, there was no impact. Crazy. No impact, folks. So in other words, like like what happened to those women in between legs didn't call while well, they came on the show and they talked about it. It was like they ran right through something. They they told us on the show. What's crazy, dude? Like, okay, so this guy, Bobby, and and his his girlfriend, um, that's not her real name. That's just, you know, whatever. But she she doesn't want her real name. I don't know why he doesn't care, but anyway, I respect it. But they they run that runs across the road, they go right through it. What was that? So, so that this one there, like this one really struck me. Like, I mean, it really, really hit me because I was thinking, this is crazy, right? What do you, what you got going on here is like several different things, dude. So he's like, so what it was, was it a ghost? I said, no, dude. I said, what you were looking at was a skinwalker. I mean, an absolute skinwalker. It was a coyote. And I said, when it was coming up onto the road, are you sure it was just a coyote? Or was it a man crawling on all fours with the skin on, uh, like like mimicking, imitating a coyote? And he said, no, it was large, about the size of a wolf. He's like, and it was no, there was no skins hanging off of this thing. It was a coyote, like a coyote. And then it just decided that it was going to run out in front of our vehicle and then it stands up and he goes, and you could see it like real quickly. It happened really fast. It was like with the Japanese, they call Satori, where everything just kind of slows down. He goes, and she starts to step on the brake. And I was like, we're going to hit this thing. There's no way we can avoid it. Then it goes back down like, like real fast. It was like, whoop, whoop, whoop. And then, you know, and then, and there was no impact. And we look back, there's nothing. And we're like, did we just hit that man? <laughs> And so they talked about it. It was something that they talked about over and over and over again. And uh, he said, dude, uh, we were so freaked out. He goes, and we were heading to her uh, uncle's uh, place, uh, whatever. Um, they're not from here. They live in East Texas. You know, funny. They came from the big thicket, whatever phone ringing off the hook. God, come on, quit calling me. Um, so they live like in the big thicket area. And so you know, they had they didn't have they've never had any Bigfoot or anything like that, but they have had an encounter with in the Sam Houston National Forest of what they thought was possibly a Bigfoot screeching or screaming all night long, and they could hear two of them going back and forth. And they were like, That sounds really freaky. Um, but that was years ago. They didn't they didn't have a something to record. It was like in 2003. Uh, but they said in 2008, you know, this is what happened to them. They were driving through the and it was at nighttime and it wasn't even that late. I think they said it was like 10 at night or something. And they had stopped to get something to eat and they'd kind of messed around, you know. And so they were just, you know, driving, getting in late and they were going to spend the week at, with their at their uncle's place or whatever. And, and the other side of Blanco. <clears throat> but, yeah, so they, they run through this thing and they drive through a creature. Now, here, I'm going to tell you, this is where you come in, audience. Give me your opinions of what the hell that was, because this is what I've been thinking about for the last, like, two or three days. It's been rolling around in my head. Like, I can't even. It's crazy. I absolutely, JFA, think that they predate the Internet. That's I really do. Rita, she says, Skinwalker. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So.
So give me your ideas. Put put any questions you have in capital letters. Holy charity. That's a funny comment. That's a funny comment. Yeah, morning to you too. Who is this? F F M F M T. Yeah, if everybody could just walk up right and stop eating each other, that'd be great. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And Lee Tracker, he said another comment there. Big Thicket was my life for many. It was my Big Thicket was my life for many years. Absolutely a hot spot. Rob Riggs wrote a book about it, and it's, it was into the Big Thicket. It was all about the high strangers of the Big Thicket. Uh, even talked about the Saratoga Lights and how the ley line runs from there, clear across Texas, way out into the west to the Marfa lights. So if you look at Marfa and Saratoga, they're like the lights are right here, straight across, and uh, there are ghost lights that appear. And very interesting. So yeah. That's an interesting question there. Um, Liberty 1776, he says, as they can cloak, could this be a holographic projection? They can do like a reflection of themselves. So what you got is this coyote that comes up to the, to the, to the, and it's just, I can't stop, you know, repeating it because it's so bizarre. And then it stands up, right? And, and it's like a man in a skin or something and then goes back down on all fours and then they go through it. Ghost, maybe ghost of a skinwalker. Say that it was a skinwalker that lived out there, um, possibly a, a Lapan Apache or some kind of a, of a native or whatever. And, it, you know, maybe a Kickapoo. I don't know. It could have been anything. And then it just it, he dies out there, but he stays in his spirit form. Maybe he's like Palpatine from Star Wars. He's able to just keep his spirit. I, I don't, I'm just, you know, I was I'm just spitballing some crazy th stuff here. I'm joking, but. Um, kind of joking, but kind of not. I don't. I don't really know. I mean, it, it really freaked me out when I when I heard about that. But that's not unheard of. Now, if you go down 183, you know, and you and you, you take it all the way to Gonzalez, uh, on the other side of Gonzalez, um, there was another story that was similar to this one. Now, I looked it up in our database. People, it sounds all fancy. I looked it up in our database. Whatever. It's our emails, and so. I looked it up and, and I saw in one of the folders it said Strange Skinwalker. And I don't even know who made that or who put it, who created that file, Tony. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> him and Armando had made all kinds of files and stuff back. So I was wondering about this. Um, we had a guy that used to work with us sometimes and he would go out and, and drive around and, and actually talk to some of the people that we had that would actually get these stories. And he, he's not around anymore. He passed away a couple of years ago. But he was a good old dude, man, and he, he lived down in Victoria, and he would he would go into the southeast Texas and that you know and and talk to some of these people, and one of them was somebody from Cuero who gave us a really weird story, and then, and then there was another one on the other side of Gonzalez, and so I remember this report, and it came from like 2019, like in December of 2019, and uh, this person was driving down that highway. And they were headed to Port Aransas. Some people like to take that road. You can now you can take it all the way 35 to Corpus, and then take the bridge across to Port A. And it's a, it's a really beautiful, nice drive. Um, but uh, I like going down the 183, even though the road's a little more dangerous because it's a, it becomes two lane at one point. You know, and I don't really like it, but it's such a nicer, prettier drive. And there's 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 all these towns there, and Gonzalez is a neat little town the home of come and take it. You see these cannons, you know, because there was a battle that was fought there where the Mexican army uh, executed a bunch of Texans. Um, so what ends up happening? This uh, person was driving along and something very similar to, to, to that happened, except they didn't drive through it. And it was, a, it was what looked like a man was standing there by the fence line. There was like a, 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 a fence or whatever. And he, took off running, and then he kind of jumped. And when he did, when he landed on the ground, he became what looked like an oversized coyote and ran out in front of these people's vehicle. And it happened like that. It was really fast. It was not like some long, drawn-out encounter. Um, but it was like from a standing point, he jumped up in the air, and they said he jumped up high enough to be Michael Jordan and came down and then hit the ground and became what looked like a, a just an oversized coyote and then ran across the road. So that one there, nobody hit. They didn't hit it. So it wasn't as interesting, I guess. And I'm not taking away from your encounter. But 
it wasn't as like dramatic as this one where they actually drove through this thing. Um, the driving through the thing part is the part that I got a problem with. I mean, I got, I mean, I'm not saying I got a problem. Like, like, like you know, um, it's, it's like a figure of speech. I have a problem, but I have a problem with just wrapping my mind around what this could be because so many things were going on in that encounter. It was like crazy. You know, I don't know about that. There's an interesting comment there. Nikki, Mickey McSporin. Wasn't the interweb created at CERN and is a web designed to trap us? Uh, I have no idea. No, I did not. No, I have not done Carlos' story yet. Wolf, do you have an opinion on why crawlers eat if they're spiritual beings? Yes, I do have an opinion on that, and I will tell you exactly what I think about all of these creatures and, and what that what what they do and well, why they do what they do. Hold on, let me get one of these lozenges things here. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get into that for a second. And if you have any opinions about it, well, leave it in the comment section and we can try to get to it. Let me catch this up real quick. Betsy says, interesting, ghost of a skinwalker. Yeah, it is. It's it's uh, <laughs> weird. Bill and T, how you doing? Hope your day is good. <clears throat> Anunnaki says, I've taken that exact route to Port A. It's a nice drive, isn't it? You go through Goliad. It's really cool. A lot of Texas history there. Yes. I believe that's correct. <clears throat> Dorothy says, "Isn't there a black dog or something like that of Quero?" I believe I believe it's Quero. Um, I got to look and I got to check, but I have heard stories of black dog in that area. But actually, I thought that was more near Gonzalez too. Yeah, there you go, Lee Tracker E coming through with some with some good answers. Liberty says, see, we are all family here. There we are. Love my audience. You guys are the smartest people on the internet, man. Let me tell you. And I'm not joking. I had a, I have a he's a pretty big, I'm not going to say his name right now because you'll, but he was talking about his audience the other day. And I mean, I don't blame him. He showed me some of the comments and we were talking shop. I was talking shop with another large YouTuber. And I can't say too much because you'll immediately know what I'm talking about. He was just saying how his some of the people that watch his show, he's like, dude, they don't. He likes my audience. And people want y'all. People want you. I'm not joking. When I go on someone else's show, everybody in this community knows, everybody in this field, that if you get Josh Turner, the PRT fans travel. Y'all travel. Y'all are like, like this is home field right here, right? This is PRT can't touch us when i go somewhere else i'm on somebody else's channel you know and i gotta play by their rules and whatever you know how it goes but you guys always show up and fill that chat up that's why everybody wants us they want me to go on their channel because they know that you will show up there and i keep files of stuff that all i do is take talk about it on other somebody else's channel to help them out and to, to so there's stories that i just got sitting right here Right here in this notebook and on the deal up here. And that's all we do. Those stories sit there and I take them and I tell them on other people's shows. You won't hear them on PRT because if somebody li I like somebody and they like me and we're cool, I'll take those reports to the, their channel and we will talk about them on their channel to help them out. And you guys know that you're going to get a treat when you when I go to someone else's show. 
Thank you, Blondes and Booze. Blondes and Booze just said, true story, Wolf. Paratroopers do show up. They are the best. Yeah. And we have done our best to try to build this community that, that we uh, – well, thank you for that, Spill and Tea. She says, Wolf, I just love you all. You know, it's, it's just, we're a family, man. Everybody knows the paratroopers. Now, Nelly, uh, I'm going to let you in a little secret. And me and Nelly were talking about, well, all of us as a group, but Nelly in particular was talking about writing a song about the paratroopers, about us as a team, as a family. Wouldn't that be cool? It's just an idea we're kicking around right now. She's trying to finish up this other one. Man, she's amazing. She's got some some talent. So to get back to the question and not stray too far from the topic here, why do crawlers need to eat? Well, the, the fact of the matter is I don't know if they need to, but I think they enjoy it. Why do demons want to possess people? Think about it. If you were a demon... Why would you want to possess someone, right? You would possess them because you want to do things that they do. You remember how we talked about the what they called the others that they attach themselves to people on their back and all that. Well, when you when you stop and you think about what they were saying, what Gerald and uh, Joel were telling us was essentially that these beings get, they can derive pleasure from being attached to a human. The human consumes things. The demon gets to eat and drink and do whatever the, the human is doing, right? So what you end up with is something like Lee Tracker East uh, said it, um, they, you know, their appetite is never full. They want to have the sensation of sex. That's a big one of getting high, intoxicated on booze and drugs. That's another big one. And then some of them have bloodlust and they want to kill. And they get this thrill out of it. And so they attach themselves to a person that becomes a serial killer. I kid you not. I was reading one the other day and I just put it on the, my, my uh, Facebook. Um, this demonic little dude who was on some dating game show. And uh, he literally murdered all these these uh, women. And they will never know the, the extent of how many people he killed. Just go look at my Facebook. You'll see. I'm not going to talk about him a bunch. Um, but these people, what they do, um, something attaches to them and it enjoys being, you know. So, yes, if a crawler is a demonic entity that is somewhere in between like a metaphysical sort of a subnature creature like gnomes and dwarves and gargoyles and all these other weird beings, Bigfoot, which I'm sad to say a lot of these apers are going to be like, it's just a giant monkey running around in the woods. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure it is. Okay. Um, you know, and, and if you've ever dealt with these people online, they're the worst trolls ever. But the bottom line is this. These beings, along with their dog man and goat man brethren and everything else in between, what they do is they enjoy living in our world and, and partaking of things that belong to the flesh. And I do believe that they are an in-between creature, species, whatever you want to call them. So that's my opinion, and they do what they do. Uh, they're, they're rotten and evil, but they enjoy um, eating, drinking, and doing everything that we do. I mean, it's just, that's you know, so yeah, they, that, that's why they eat. I don't know that they have to. But uh, that's what they do. Werewolf5674, what's up, my man? How you doing today? War criminal, what's up, man? Uh, see BMR still in here. Dorothy Metcalf, uh, great uh, person, nice person, lives here in Austin. Liberty, thank you for that donation, man. I appreciate that. He said, send lawyers, guns, and money. <laughs> um, you yeah. know. Um, Rod Nichols is in the house. Moon at noon. How you doing? Susan Woodcarver. Thank you for that, which you gave me that day for my mother. I always appreciate that. Mm, really good people.
Marquetta. You've been on the show and talked about your encounters. And yeah. If you got to go, Josh, you got to go, man. Get you some rest, brother. Just reading, looking through some of the comments. Any more comments? Philip Barnes, how you doing, man? I see everybody's cheating there at work trying to watch the show and listen or whatever. <clears throat> Amy Creel, how you doing? What did she say here? Thomas Zinser is a psychologist who wrote Soul Enter Soul Centered Healing about this realization that many patients had attachments and communication with the attachments. And yes, I actually sat there one day at a place here in Austin. I don't want to say the name of it. Um, it's one of the the one of our clients. Um, uh, we have, but you know what? The hell with it. They haven't been a client of ours in a long time. It was a place called Garden Terrace. I'll just tell you right now. And uh, so I was sitting there in this area they call the Star, which is where they have all these books and magazines and stuff. And I was listening. I was I was reading. I was listening to this guy who's schizophrenic. His name was Oscar. And he had schizophrenia. And he was sitting there and he was talking to himself. And he was like, please leave me alone. You know, and he was, oh, God, I get the chills when I think about this. And I was sitting there reading a magazine. So I was kind of getting perturbed. I'm like, this guy's just annoying me. I just kind of lifted up the magazine. And then he got more rambunctious, I guess would be the word, and was kind of flopping around. And so I, they had really comfortable chairs and I was enjoying reading what I was reading. So I stopped and I was like, are you okay? And I just kind of looked at this guy. And then I'll never forget, and I've said this on the show before, I heard a voice behind him talking. It wasn't him because his mouth wasn't moving. And so I put the magazine down and I was like, okay, this is not this is not schizophrenia. I don't know what the hell this is, um, but um, I had a pretty good idea. It was 100%, but it was something demonic attached to him. That poor man was being tortured by these entities. And at that time, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't, the, I wasn't as good of a – I'm not saying I'm a good guy now, but I am on the good guy's team. And um, I wasn't necessarily a good guy at that time. So I wasn't going to stop and pray for this man or whatever. I just got up and got the hell away from him. And at that time, I'm being completely honest, I didn't need the job. It was just whatever. Stephanie says, I'm here too, just being quiet. <laughs> Julie, how you doing? Jackie. All, all, all really cool people here in the chat today. Glad a lot of people showed up. Hi, Diana, Rita, it's always good to see you, Jackie Hall, Werewolf, Eberron's got to go, okay, man, take it easy, brother, take care of yourself, but uh, couldn't be prouder of the community we have here and what we've got and what we've built here. Uh, JFA has an interesting, uh, thing there. I'm going to leave that question there. I'll be right back. I got to answer this person. I'm not going to call. I'm just going to text him back. All right. Give me two seconds. I'm just, and then I will talk about this right here. This subject you just brought up. Okay, hope we didn't lose too many people. Well, we probably did, about 20 people there. 
Uh, so it says, hi, Wolf, can you give a brief explanation on what feral humans and not deer are? Okay, I didn't even read the whole thing before I left uh, the chat briefly. Um, okay, so not deer are not feral humans. Those are two different things. I got a report out of Brisbane, Australia. Um, that, well, the person, I should say, that's not correct. It was They're from Brisbane, but they ended up going into the interior of Australia and got attacked, Okay. This is a story I've not flushed out completely. And if, if you guys remember these stories, like as I'm on the show on Sunday or whatever, and you guys want to hear about these, sometimes I'll talk about something and I won't like go back to it or whatever, because I have so many that come and go and come across our desk here at PRT. So if you remind me, I can tell you, I can, and I'll flesh that story out for you. What I mean by fleshing it out is this just going through it and getting the details and reading it and maybe trying to contact the people. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, and just either emailing them back and forth or going through messenger or talking to them on the phone. Now if they're in Australia. I'm probably just going to talk to them on the phone through messenger. If I can't, um, then I'm just going to correspond to them back and forth. And that takes time. That takes longer. If it's here in the States, I can pick up the phone and talk to them. It's much easier. And a lot of times these people, they don't really watch the show. Unfortunately, if, if you're just depending on your audience to give you stories, which a lot of these people that do these podcasts and YouTubes are like, I'm just going to wait around till one of my listeners gives me a story. Okay, dude, only so many listeners are going to have stories, right? You're going to have to hustle it up. So what you got to do is talk to them and let them go out and get people to bring to you, which is kind of what we've been doing here for a long, long time. Or you can do what I like to do too, is lurk in all the groups. And every time you'll see me in there too. If you see, you see me lurking, I'm there. I'll be like, hey, hit me up. I want to hear your story. And then I go from there. And then I'll they'll either come on the show or I'll retell the encounter. Uh, me retelling the encounter seems to be pretty popular. Although sometimes people like to troll me and say that, oh, well, only a person who had their own story can tell it correctly. Well, you know, that's great and all, but when they tell you, hey, I want you to tell the story, not only am I flattered by that, but it's always easier for me to be able to, you know, relay it, it you know, than, than trying to coordinate somebody doing it. Um, and especially when you do it on a live, a lot of times people forget things or they have a hard time or whatever. Um, so it's always easier and better when you can do a pre-record, but then you have to have time to go and do that too. And then you have to edit it and then you have to put it on the show. And it's just so much easier to just go and do a live and just tell people what's going on. But I get that not everybody can do that because not everybody has the same kind of mindset. But uh, I think a lot of what's going on in this field, though, and I'm going to be real damn honest with you, is just pure D laziness. Just pure laziness. Now, I'm not telling everybody that they should sleep four or five hours a day like me and run two businesses and do a show and do all this and, and talk to people and get all these encounters. And you see how many times my phone is interrupted. Um, yeah, I'm not telling you that you have to be like me. Uh, one of my colleagues said, you're like the Energizer Bunny. You you have all this energy to do all this stuff, whatever. I mean, I'm not saying that you have to be that way. But if you want to be successful, stop sleeping so much. Get enough rest that you're rested or whatever. But Garitano told me he sleeps six hours a day. You know, um, that's just something that people do. Uh, Barton, he goes to bed 11, 12 o'clock at night, gets up at 5 a.m. and goes and works until 3 in the afternoon and then still does his show and does all this stuff. I mean, these are the people that are going to be successful because they're doing that. You know, they're they're working their jobs and they're doing this. And some of these people that are highly successful at, in this field, they they just get after it, man. Uh, Lyle Blackburn is one of the most uh, active people I've ever seen. He travels all over the place and then he tours and then he writes music and he does all this stuff. He writes books. He goes to conferences. He's all over the freaking place. Um, and he still finds time to talk to me. So, I mean, you know, th just the excuses, though, that some people come up with, like, oh, I just don't have enough hours in the day. Well, you better make some of those hours because when I'm done with this live stream, I'm going to go run errands and then I'm going to go out of town and then I'm going to go to my taxes and get them filed and get them done. And guess what? I'm going to go to the gym tonight and then I'm going to go to sleep. and I'm going to do it all over again. God willing. Um, but, you know. I'm not telling you that you have to be like me and be like, you know, go getter or an entrepreneur or whatever. Um, I'm actually getting ready to possibly start a new business venture. And I'm going to try and start. Uh, I'm going to go when things settle down with the market a little bit. I'm going to do some some stuff I got to take care of. There's some things I got to do. 
um, and I'm going to sell some gold, and I'm going to buy cattle. What's coming, you're going to need food sources. And I'm not even a big red meat eater, but here in Texas, cows are everywhere. Uh, so I would strongly suggest if you can get a hold of livestock, I would say do it. Um, you know, if you can get land, any type of land, whatever, do it. If you can get a hold of gold, do it. Um, you know, I've been saying these things for years when I go to Rumble and I, you know, people say, well, you've been talking about Rumble, blah, 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 blah. This guy messaged me the other day and I'm going to tell you something. Okay. When have I said, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that and have not done it. I'm going to go over it again. Two conferences. I said, we were going to do it. We were going to pack the house and each one was going to be, you know, amazing. And everybody said the same thing. I didn't pay these people to go and lie and say that the conference was great. I'm not that magical. Okay. Um, I said we were going to make music, and we did it, or we're doing it. Okay, there's all these things that we have; these irons in the fire. They're gonna, it's gonna, it was gonna happen. It will happen. You know, somebody asked me the other day. They're like, "Oh, if these things didn't come off, you know, and didn't work out, you know, like with the music and the board game and all that stuff, and would you would it be a disappointment to you?" You know, I'm like, "Well, of course it would be, but that ain't gonna happen." Well, like it's going to happen. Yes, absolutely, 100%. If I have to will it into existence, I, I will. If God so allows me to, I will do it. Believe me. You think this other books aren't going to be written? Just I've, I've written one book pretty much. I had to shelve it because I couldn't get two of the major witnesses to, to come forward. They backed out on me. And then the other one, I was doing a project with Redfern, and he's not here now. I was, I was going to do it with him, but I can't, but you know, what am I supposed to do? So now I have to pull back and then go another direction. So we're going to work on these other books. It's just something you do in your spare time, which is another thing people don't understand. And I was talking to Barton about this yesterday. We were on the phone for two hours yesterday and we were talking about it. He's trying to finish the Spotsville monster, but he's got work and he's got the show and these people acting like, you know, wild asses and doing whatever they're doing doesn't help trying to drive wedges between us. And it's not going to work. Okay. It's not going to work. Um, we're going to achieve things. All of us as a community, you are going to witness the transformation and you are witnessing the transformation of a community that was once just a loose little confederation of People doing this and people doing that and everybody fighting all the time. They act like this is something new. This When I first came to this community, it was at war. And then there was another war that I saw and I had to get involved because they were attacking people's free speech. And it's just been one thing after another. But I did my best to try to bring people together and bring minds together and create things so that there could be collaborations. And now, unfortunately, because of the people in this community that are bad ones, the handful of bad ones, you can count them on two, on two hands, the bad ones, they have ruined it for everybody else because we can't have another conference. In fact, I was told by our lawyer, don't do it. Do not do it. And it's not, it's not worth it. Not just for the safety concerns, but what these people might try to do and say and slander you. It's been nothing but warfare since the last conference. So we can't do it, but we did it twice. We will again at some point. I'll revisit that. But right now, we're not going to do that. I got other projects I got to deal with. I got two books I got to get popped out by the end of the year um, because I said I was going to make these books. I was going to write these books. It's going to happen. And then we got to get refocused on the board game and we need the equipment so we can go to all these places. I drive around at night and I see these places and I'm like, man, if I had the equipment, I would just go right now and go and make a video. Now, how good it'll be, I don't know. But, you know, it's not going to be like Garitano or, or, or Palacios or something like that. But, I mean, it, it's going to be, you know, on location, something, you know, I can show you. Hey, look, at least this is you will see this is the place where we're talking about. So I'm a man of my word. I'm going to bring you what I can. I'm going to let you in on whatever I'm doing so that we can work together and, and enjoy ourselves. But also, let's try to figure out what the hell is going on. Wouldn't you like that? I mean, you know. God. I can't. This thing's too sour. Good grief. Uh. So 
Betsy says, not deer confuse me like zombie deer, sometimes bipedal. Feral humans, like the ones that these this Australian people that saw come out, they, they came from up under the ground. Now, we've heard this before. Me and Anthony, we were talking to somebody who had told us, literally, they were working in a store and, and began to tell us this, this crazy story. We were talking about Needles, California. Remember I said there was a story coming out of Needles? It's uh, funny that this person brought that up because this isn't the California story I was going to tell, but I could save the other one for another day. It was about the rebobs. But this one here, I've told this one on the show, I believe, but these people, they live underground. Now, if you've ever driven through the desert, in, in, you know, in, in, like it's a hundred mile stretch right there on that highway. I don't know what highway it is. I can't remember the name of it. If Nellie's in the chat, she could probably tell you. But uh, Needles, California. Um, there are people who have seen, like, late at night, people just walking across that highway. It's nothing but sand, nothing but desert. And these people are just there, just there, uh, just coming up out of the ground. Like, it's weird. It's like they're living in these dumbs or something. Maybe there's something there because there's 100 miles of nothing but desolation. And they have phones like every like 10, 20 miles, whatever, because people, if they break down, you run the risk of dying out there because there's 100 miles of nothing. Um, so, yeah, there's stories galore that come out of that area. People saying that they see weird things running across the road at night and stuff. And it's just it's just a creepy, creepy, weird place. I wouldn't want to live out there. You couldn't pay me to live out there. I would not live out there for anything. Um, and in fact, that area of that desert, you won't live out there. I believe it's the Mojave. You just, you won't live. I mean, you won't survive. But yet people see these like what look like feral people just running around out there. Now, how down, how deep down do they have to go to get water? I have no idea. And are they people or are they an alien species? We don't know. You don't know what they are. But here's the thing. The not deer. Now, that's, that's feral people. You get those stories all the time. You get them up in the Appalachians, West Virginia. You get all kinds of weird stories from there. I've gotten a few. I had one where some people, this guy Ronnie, literally told me he was stalked by three feral men that were trying to kill him while he was hunting in West Virginia. That's a whole nother story. Now, I do believe he has told that story, and I think it might have been told on Super, or not, uh, not his channel. It might have been Darkness Prevails, or, or it might have been What Lurks Beneath. Um, those guys, you know, uh, do good work too. And I know Mr. Ballin, I think he won, once not too long ago talked about some feral people stalking some people, whatever. I saw something. Um, I guess he lives here in Austin now. Maybe I can ask him. Uh, but there, there's a bunch of weird stories out there on the web about people being stalked and attacked by feral people. And in fact, we have them living right here in the city of Austin. And that's literally what they are. It's feral people people. I kid you not. Um, they literally are being, you know, feral. And there's rumors of cannibalism and things like that. People have been talking about this for decades now. Uh, but anyways, moving on, the, 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 the not deer. What these things are, are people seeing deer that literally stand up on their hind legs. And according to Bettina, as she claims, when we were going down Ranch Road 12, out to the devil's backbone, she saw a deer stand up on its hind legs. Now, Maddie may have seen it too because they both screamed and freaked out. I don't know. I don't think Nellie saw it. She said it was just that the deer turned and its eyes were glowing green or something. I don't know. Something like that. I don't know if that's if that's what she said. Please don't get upset with me, Nellie, if that's not what you said because there was all this screaming and yelling going on because everybody started panicking. Um but uh, I just heard everybody giving a, giving a different story. Now, I did see this deer turn and move at a weird angle, like it twisted its body. And then when we turned back around, there was another deer directly on the so other side of the road that was deceased. Um, and I didn't see the original deer that everybody was freaking out about. So I don't know what happened. I mean, I didn't get a good look. I was driving. Um, I was trying to keep us alive. That was, that was my job. But. People see these not deer. I, uh, there was a guy who came on another guy's show. His name was Mark DeLeon. Um, he came out there and said his name and everything. Um, so I don't have to hide his identity or whatever. He doesn't care. But it was out near, um, 
it was in South Texas. It's right there by Corpus, near Mathis. And he saw three of them stand up on their hind legs and walk around. Now, most recently, I got a report uh, on the other side of Burnett, uh, Granite Shoals. That's where it was. Somebody saw one near Granite Shoals literally walking on its hind legs, and then it ran across the road on its hind legs. These are what we call not deer because it's not deer because deer don't do that. They don't run around on their hind legs. And that's where you get these reports of like a deer man, you know, like this. What is this? You know. So, anyways. Oh, no. See, now this is different. Spunky or er, Spilling Tea says, Wolf, I can't do that because I don't sleep tons even when I am in bed. I toss and turn. So, but I'm not telling, like, if, if let, me, let me just clarify that, too, so everybody understands, okay? Not everybody has to do what I do because you don't need to do it, do it unless you're doing what I do. Then you, yeah, you got, you got to make sacrifices. There's sacrifices that have to be made, like for me. I have to, like, I do these breathing exercises. It, it takes up, like, 20 minutes of my day every day. Um, I say a, a, a prayer before I get out of bed. Then I say the morning or sometimes it's in the afternoon prayer with everybody. And then I say prayers throughout the day. And I also, I, I work out. And uh, it's it's sometimes my workouts can be really brutal and intense. And then I also, uh, I, I take cold showers. I do it every day. It's cold and it sucks. And you know, sometimes you don't feel like it. And sometimes you just, you really want a warm shower, but it's just not in the cards. You got to do what you got to do for your body, for your health, and you have to, to make sacrifices. But if you are ill or you're elderly or you're somebody who doesn't, just doesn't have time, then that's understandable. I'm just telling you what I do. That's it. Yeah, Dorothy says, get goats. Goats are, though, they're little masters of getting loose. They're like like pigs, dude. They they you can you it's hard to keep them. Um, if they want to get loose, they're smart little animals, dude. They can get loose. And the, the other thing I don't like about goats as, as opposed to cattle is that they get preyed upon more and they get killed easier. They're so small and fragile compared to, and predators go after them. You have to really watch them. Because your herd can be decimated by a pack of coyotes real easy. One thing you can do to prevent that, though, and I recommend anybody, if, you, if you're into the cattle thing or whatever, and if you're into getting, because a lot of my family is, a lot of my family on both sides, are they raise cattle, animals, goats, sheep, whatever, get a donkey or two. Put them out there. Get you some dogs like my, my Uncle Butch. He has Pyrenees, and he just lets them roam around the property. He's got like two or three of them at any given time. Um, get some get some dogs and put them out there and let them kind of be a pack, you know, and uh, and don't put one dog out there just by itself. Be, and just and if you do put a spike collar on them, uh, because if you just put one dog out there, uh, it's going to get ganged up on by the coyotes or the hogs. and They're going to kill it. So my advice to you, I can tell you all about all this stuff on Rumble or something. We can talk about that. Yes, Diana, get some chickens. Not only can you get chickens that'll be eggs, which are protein that you can have for indefinitely, but they'll also um, eventually, you know, you can, if you have enough of them, you'll have, you can have them for meat too. Um, you know, they'll reproduce just like cows. Oh, that's a, that's an interesting thing. Rudy Caldera says, "Good morning, Wolf. Could you please have a show on economics and investing, etc.?" Yes, I'd love to. Um, I'll tell you one right now. It's, it's it's a little late in the game, and it's been shooting through the roof. But uh, I would invest as one stock. I would tell you right now is Nvidia. I invested in it two years ago, and it's just you know, so or I guess a year and a half ago. 
but there's a stock tip for you that's doing really well. Betsy says, I think feral humans aren't paranormal. Um, probably not, but it's still weird. And there sometimes they are because I think some of them have done what others and that's they have learned to do things, you know, through the use of human blood. Um, I've heard stories of some of these. They, they choose to live out there. So they have uh, they do this uh, witch warlock type thing. That's weird. We post that comment. Werewolf. I think Lee Trekker was trying to say the feral, that they breed with Bigfoot at times. Yeah, I've heard that too, that these feral people sometimes will breed with Bigfoot. That's interesting, Morgan. Says that my friend uh, Lindsay and I saw a man with deer horns behind her house in the woods, fifth grade. We just talked about that the other day. Interesting. <laughs> it is interesting. So as a master mason, I actually am an acquainted with the real werewolves. No, they are not aliens. They orig orig originally originate from Pakistan. They're only around 10,000. Um, I'll touch on that. The, in the Indus Valley in Pakistan, uh, there are stories of these werewolf-type creatures. They call them the Cynocephali. The trade between the Greeks, the Bactrian Greeks in particular, who went to that area, and then, of course, they settled in the port of Gutara, which became Gutarati. Now, they're sort of a mix of Greek and, and Indian, and they're not really liked by the other Indians or the Pakistanis. But they are kind of credited with trading with these uh, dogmen. And there are stories of the dogmen, dog-headed Cynocephali people being like Black Sea pirates who actually traded and worked with Cossacks. Um, very interesting stories I've uncovered. Now, in order to get this kind of information, you have to be able to speak other languages, which is something most people can't do. But I will tell you this. If you learn to use something other than just using like the basic search tools that you get from um, the very large uh, beach ball thing, um, beach ball of color, go to another outlet, right? Uh, go to other media outlets and try to look into other countries and their media. Now, I have friends from probably every country on earth. And I talk to some of my friends from certain countries quite a bit. And one of my good, good friends is from Pakistan. And I talk to him probably at least twice a week. And he does, we have talked about these dog-headed people and that they do live in the Indus Valley. Um, now they're kind of feral, but at one time they had something some akin to a like a semi-civilized uh, society. And they traded with other people. And I read recently about a village in Azerbaijan where people, they have these elongated heads. only a matter of time before it probably goes mainstream and a bunch of people run over there and start messing with them. But their heads look very weird and their ears are kind of kicked back and pointed. And the legend is that they were, these Azerbaijani people, um, there's a small like enclave of them. And they, they have like a weird name like Kalitans or Kalitans. I, I don't know. I, I'd have to look it up. But it was something that I read from a from a Russian newspaper, 
Um, and it was translated into English, thank God, because I don't speak Russian. But they, they, was, they were talking about these people and that their heads are shaped a certain way and they're not covered in fur or anything like that, but they claim that they are the descendants and, and they are from a cross breeding of these uh, wild dog headed people from the Indus Valley that settled in that region after the destruction of the Mughal empire, they were mercenaries and they were driven out. The Mughals drove them out um, or, or they fought a war against the Mughals, I should say, and that they were driven out and then the Mughals were destroyed. Um, they were fighting the Khan, which was Kubla. And they were, they were, there's a whole history there. Anyway, we could talk about the history and they got pushed out into an enclave there and they live right there above the Caspian sea. And they are literally supposedly the descendants of interbreeding between wolf-headed, werewolf-looking people and local tribe people. So who knows? I mean, it's an interesting story. It would be nice if our media didn't put such a clamp on everybody else's media so they could spin their little narrative and keep you not only in the matrix, but in the matrix, within the matrix, within the matrix, so that everybody's just completely dumbasses and stupid because they're like, uh, yo, yeah, I didn't see it on the news. So I don't believe that's real. I, I get my information from Communist News Network. Uh, I didn't see it on the news. It's not real. Yeah. Drink some more fluoride. Ooh, Ananaki Bro says Jacob's well. That's an interesting subject. Um, yeah, there are some interesting subjects. Jacob's well. You know what? Hit me up about that because there's some stuff that we could talk about. I don't have anything off the top of my head, but that, that is an interesting spot right there, Jacob's Hole, or Jacob's Well, yeah. For weeks it says, never, JoJo, Australia is the best place to be in the woods. I miss it. Well, depends on where you go. Australia is a country that's huge, right? But it's like its own, it's, its own continent. Everybody lives like this around the outside because they're, they're, you have to live close to the ocean so that th there's enough water, fresh water that comes in from the ocean that goes into the in inland enough because the, the middle is just barren. Um, and there are still places in the middle of Australia we don't know nothing about because nobody can go out there. Amy Krill, <laughs> goats cannot be contained and they stink. Yes. Very true. Overbuilt automotive. Hey, man, what's going on? Rudy Caldera. Yeah, I do. I have some stories from Southern California. Southern California. I need to bring James Bartley on. I'll let him talk about some dogman reptilian stuff. He was on one of our Saturday shows. If you go back a couple months and, and look at that show, it was the first one we did on the Saturdays, and it was one of the live streams. And he talks about some of that. But um, get him on the show and, and just let him spin, let him go, because he'll, he'll tell you all kinds of stuff, man. He's been through some stuff. He knows about the vampire cults, too. Wow. So Blondes and Booze. Says alpacas will make you money. I raise them. You can have up to 10 alpacas on one acre. They don't eat much and their fiber is hyperallergenic. Wow. We talk all the time. So hit me up on that because I might take you up on that. And I might, I might do that. I don't know about alpacas. I know, I know cattle, but I don't know about alpacas. Give the dog spike collars to help fight off, uh, better fight off predators. Yep, absolutely, Slim Jimmy. And, and, and my preference when it comes to guard dogs, Spanish Mastin or the English Mastiff. You can't go wrong. I'm telling you. They're not necessarily good inside dogs. My friend Jeff, his girlfriend got one, and he, she was like, this dog is chewing up our furniture and is tearing up this and that. I was like, you got to train them. You got to train them. You cannot just let them go and do what they want. They will destroy your furniture. Then they will tear up anything and everything. But if you want them on your property to protect wildlife, or, or uh, well, that too, but to protect your your property, your, the people of your property and the, and the animals, they will do that. They will do it. And they will put a boot in the ass. On, I'd put money on them against any predator out there. You know, I'd say this. Three of those equals one dog, man. 
You know, just like the Romans, they said three masters equals one lion. Trust me. Oh, there you go, Anunnaki. Yeah, AMD and, and, and NVIDIA. Yeah, those are good ones to buy. And if you would have got in on the ground floor of uh, – I had GE last year. That was a good one, too. Anyway, we can talk. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about all this. There's all, all sorts of stuff to talk about. I don't want to get too far off the subject right now. But um, anyway, interesting to think about the Skinwalker dude ghost, ghost of a Skinwalker, or was it just a Skinwalker who could manipulate the space-time continuum? You know, I don't know. Interesting thing to think about. I'm going to jump off here, folks. We're at the two-hour and 50-minute mark. Um, thank you to everybody who donated. Once again, everybody appreciate the help. It makes it worthwhile to come out here and, and do this because I did spend three hours of my time. And all some people think I shouldn't get paid for that. I believe in free enterprise. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. I do it because I enjoy it. I'm not trying to make money at it, but it does, it does help. It definitely does. When you're trying to do what we're doing, you need all the help you can get. The main thing you can do is just give me views, hit the like button, comment, whatever, and just be real. Just come and show up. I appreciate that I can come on here and talk from like 9.30 in the morning or what time did we start here? 10 o'clock in the morning or whatever. Are you talking about Jacob's Hole? Yep, a lot of people went missing and never recovered. You're right. The Blue Mountains of Australia, I had a guy on my show in the early episodes, whatever. Not so much problem with him, but he was in that flesh and blood camp, and he's a real jerk because of those people that he was friends with. He just went hard in the paint for him, and, and then he came on my show and expressed sympathy for the devil, and I was like, dude, ETFO. But he did know a lot about the Blue Mountains. He did a lot of research there. He was a Yowie investigator. Had a lot of cool stuff to say, but very devout atheist and just the smart ass. Lolita says vampire cults. Go back to the episode of the podcast on it's on YouTube too. Vampire Confessions. No, that's a real thing. Paula says, Goat's eyes give me the creeps. As much as I love animals, I, I love <clears throat> there's a picture of me this past uh, winter holding up one of those little uh, pygmy goats, little baby goat. And he was a cute little dude, and he kept following me around. So I just picked him up. My wife snapped a photo of it. I got to say, animals like me. I wish I could be a vegetarian, but very hard. Oh, Liberty says, I like Mastiffs and Great Danes. My wife loves Great Danes because she used to have one. And uh, her family raised them. But I had Mastiffs, and they both are good dogs. The thing I don't like about Great Danes is they don't live – well, Mastiffs too, but more Great Danes. They don't live very long, um, and they always have heart problems. Bless their heart, they end up passing away too soon. And it's just a – it's a when, when an animal passes away, for me, it's like it hurts. You know, it really hurts because I'm close to them. Like, I'm in this study a lot, and then the little animals just come in and out of here all the time, just pestering me. But I wouldn't have it in the way because I love them to death. Just reading the last of the comments here. Perfect. 
That's a good comment there, Amy. Very few people who get German Shepherds are active enough or assertive enough to own them. A lot of one-year-old Shepherds in shelters. Yes, absolutely. I had one that I just, I just could not break him of being aggressive. He would just get aggressive at inopportune times, and I had to, to give him away. Unfortunately, it just it's it sucks. When I, I wasn't home enough, couldn't didn't have enough time to take care of him, and it just it's unfortunate. Yeah, I like goats too. It's unfortunate. That, that's one of the things I hate about the chupacabra. It's such a nasty, insidious little creature, the real one. Um, and the way people, they, they make a big joke out of it or whatever, you know. Um, but it's not a joke. And they do kill animals and they'll destroy entire livestock herds. And they're just, they're awful, evil things. I don't care what anybody says. And I think that they were tampered with by governments and they made them worse than what they could have, what they were. So, no, I don't like them. Thank you, Carol. Carol says, I have listened to several podcasts. You, Mr. Josh, have the best content. I am addicted. Your knowledge is impressive. My new favorite. Dorothy, you have a blue healer. That could be hit or miss. <laughs> Good cattle dogs, though. Australian Shepherds are the smartest cattle dogs. The smartest dog, period, to me. Um, it just in my observation, and this may be correct, it may not. I didn't look this up, but uh, and my wife has said this too. Um, and I had one of Border Collies, super duper intelligent. I don't even know what they rank on the, how smart they are. I haven't, I don't, I don't know, um, but they're super smart. So Brian Pugh says alpacas are a good investment. I've done that. The only problem is we live in a warmer climate, and I hope that it wouldn't be too rough on the poor things. I don't want them to, to, to be un unhappy, you know. Oh, werewolf. That's uh, wolf. Irish wolfhounds only lived seven years. Thank you, Titoe. Love and light now and always. Yeah, I've never heard of golden retrievers being very aggressive. Uh, a lot of them do. Raven, Raven to to race says poor German shepherds suffer from hip dysplasia when they get older. I'm going to tell you what I did, and before I jump off here, my mastiff Ivan, he lived to be 16 years old. That's really old for for an English mastiff. When he was about 10, uh, 10 or 11, he started getting hip problems, hip dysplasia. And the poor guy would walk, and he'd go, and I, it would break my heart. It would just rattle my brain. I, I was just like, what am I going to do? And I would just comfort him and hold him, and he would just sit there. like. And so the vet, I went to this vet, and a uh, pretty good guy for an Aggie. Uh, but uh, anyway, we talked, and he said, you know, what you can do is uh, take these supplements. And it was at that time, it was starting to become popular, glucosamine, right? So I tried that, but then I, I went to, to, and I thought there's got to be more that I could do. It was research. So I went to this place called Vitamin World where my friend used to run, my friend Trey. Um, I've known multiple Trey's, not Trey Felton from Thorndale Meat Market. This is another guy. So I went to him and I said, what can you do for me? And he says, dude, take chondroitin MSM and glucosamine and crush it up. Well, Ivan was really smart, and he sees me pouring that powder over his food. He's like, and he wouldn't eat it. So I had to like trick him, you know, I'd be like throw his ball or something and he'd run out because I had this little screen thing and it was like a little door thing and he would run through it and then I'd close this <laughs> behind him and I'd go and I'd put in his food and I'd pour olive oil and I'd mix it all together and then I would be like, oh, here's dinner, you know, and he would eat it and then, then he was fine. But if he saw me putting it in there, he wouldn't eat it. Um, and so, yeah, and so I, I just, this was like a daily thing. I just had to take care of him, you know. And, um, you know, now they got all kinds of stuff you can do for dogs, you know. 
um, to help them, like give them, you know, CBG oil, CBG being something that's like CBD, but it's more for the body that it heals like, you know, pains and aches and body, you know, muscles, and joints, things like that. Uh, and we also have hyaluronic acid. Big time <coughs> in Japan, they use it. Unfortunately, if you have high blood pressure, you got to be careful. So check with your doctor before you yourself take that or your vet for your dogs, but that can help. And so there are a lot of things you can do for your little animals that will be good for them uh, and help them. I used to have a fox terrier, Robert. Robert Maronite says, I love my fox terriers. I used to have one. His name was Max. And then somebody broke into my house and they stole my, my baseball card collection. I was just a 13 year old kid. And it was my mom's friend's son and his, and his uh, brother in law. And they got away with it. But I knew it was them. We couldn't prove it. But they, they stole my baseball cards and they killed our dog. Good people. I think being 13 was probably, possibly, no, it was probably one of the worst years of my whole life. A lot of upheaval. Uh, do you take supplements to lower your blood pressure? Yes, I do. And in fact, I was drinking this right here, which also was good for gout. Nellie is like Dr. Nellie. She takes care of me. Yep, Raven, animals are like family. Do anything for my dogs. Yeah, exactly. People talking about, you know, they don't like animals or they're too much trouble, whatever. Like, you don't know what you're missing, dude. Everybody calls them fur babies. Like, oh, don't talk about them like they're your children. They are. They're, they're part of my family. They're part of my life. They're part of our lives. Uh, and they make our lives better. They enrich our lives. And everybody in our household loves them. So, yeah, exactly, Curtis. They could catch his hand. Mess with my dogs, man. I'll tell you right now. You mess with my animals, dude. It's on, dude. I will show no mercy on you. Mess with my dogs. Mess with my animals. Yep. And the dude that did that, man, like, I know he did that. And he got away with it. And then, like, years later, he shot himself in the stomach or the side, nearly died. And he tried to tell people that he got attacked by some gang or something. And he was such a twisted dude, man. And he had my mom and everybody fooled that he was this good guy. And he went to church with his mother and blah, blah, blah. Kind of like what's going on now. Just people thinking that certain people are good people and they're not. They're just monsters in disguise with that. Yeah. Mm, stupid piece of crap that he was. Oh, Gil. So you changed your screen name, huh? I was wondering. I didn't see you around before, but that, that's cool. Oh, thank you, Big Kahuna. Right at the last minute, I was just about to jump off. He says, love listening to the stories while driving. Big Kahuna van. Uh, thank you for that donation. I appreciate it. Thank you for everybody that donated. Um, the donations are not expected, but they are greatly appreciated, and we can definitely use it right now. As you can see, I'm jewelryless now, man. I had to go and sell all my gold. Um, to pay for, I'm joking, folks. I still have my gold. In fact, I have an anklet right here. It's 14 carat, and I was like, I don't wear it. I don't. It was a necklace. It didn't sit right, so I turned it into a an anklet, and then you know, and then the other piece I turned into a bracelet. And I'm not even wearing any of my jewelry today. Um, I was going to tell you something though. There's something I want to show everybody. This is magnetite, and you really should think about ordering these. Get this off of eBay. It does help. My wife's got a broken back in, in two places. Um, I and mean, she's been, we've talked about this before, but she's been having good days and bad days. But she said the other day, and I know that she'll understand me talking about this because this is something that could help some people out there. I know somebody recently had messaged me um, about not being able to walk because they had a broken back. Um, the, this is an anklet. 
And if you wear this, um, you can actually, it can heal, help heal your, uh, I put it on my ankles and my hair. And um, it can help you. It really does. So I'm wearing this one right here on my brace on my, uh, and then this one is Anne Celine's daughter. That's Ken Gerhard's girlfriend. Uh, their, their daughter gave me this uh, bracelet to wear. So Anna, I'm wearing it. Thank you for the gift. I appreciate it. We went to dinner the other day and she gave it to me. Sweet kids. But uh, yeah, the get, get a magnetite bracelet. These right here go for about 40 bucks, 40 to 50 on uh, eBay, but they do work. They do help and they they'll ground you. Uh, my brother has some stuff too that he uses. I'll get, I'll, I'll find out what he does because he has some problems with his back. And he's also had neck surgery. Um, he was also, he's had his throat cut. Like he's been, he literally was cut right here. He was trying to stop these people from killing a dude and they pulled out a knife and they cut his throat, um, which led to me actually punching that guy and knocking him off a bridge and he broke his back and his neck, but he lived and I didn't get in trouble for it because we were saving a man that they were killing. They were literally stomping this guy to death. So that happened years ago, but my brother got his throat cut. Um, but, uh, yeah, that dude ended up with the worst end of it. My brother almost bled to death. We got him to the hospital. It's a true story. And the guy that was laying there, the cops come and they're like, well, you know, that guy could die. And I'm like, really? And I'm going to go to jail for it, I guess, because the guy tried to kill my brother. And then another cop came and was like, well, here's the thing. If he, if he doesn't make it, yeah, you're, you're going to be, we're going to have to, you're going to have to deal with it. More than likely, though, I mean, it's self-defense because the guy used a deadly weapon on your brother. Um, and also, they were stomping a man to death who they put into a coma for a week. So, yeah, my brother jumped out of the car um, and ran to go help this guy. And uh, I was in the passenger seat of my friend Squid's car, and then we all went out and tried to help this guy. They were just – they were killing this old elderly dude. And we know who the guy was that, that, that because he was an old homeless man that was just – Harmless. He would putter around on Sixth Street and just do whatever, picking up trash, picking up cans and stuff. You know, he was an older African American dude, and the dudes that were doing it, they were African American too. But like, they were just beating him to death. And my brother did the right thing and got out, and one of them just stuck him in the neck, and just pulled part of his. Just, by the grace of God, it didn't hit his jugular. So yeah. So after that, you know, I popped this dude a couple times, and he flipped over a and fell onto the bridge and I didn't do it. I didn't try to throw him off the bridge. It just happened. Um, but yeah, we just did what anybody should do and try to stop somebody from killing someone. And um, it could have gotten a lot worse, but those guys got hurt. And then one of them tried to press charges on me. And I'm like, really, dude, really? Because y'all were like flashing gang signs down there and doing all kinds of crap down by our club before that all went down. And then, you know, they, they tried to kill my brother. So, yeah, and so my brother takes all kinds of supplements and stuff because he's he's gotten he's had to have neck surgery because of the way that scar, the way it did whatever it did, you know. And then he held his head a certain way, you know, for years, and it caused problems. And so he had to go and get his his. Uh, Marquette Mar Mar says I've had a broken neck. Oh man, that's horrible. But my wife's got this thing. I don't know what it's called, but I could show you one day. And Anthony uses it all the time, and he it, it holds your neck in place. And you pull it up, or whatever. Yeah. I got into a fight with a guy downtown one time, and I broke his neck, and he lived. I saw him walking around with this like blender thing on his head, and you know whatever. But what you get there again? They were kicking some dude into oblivion. It wasn't my problem. I was just trying to walk by, and I had no money, and they knocked my pizza out of my hand, and I was like, that was my last two dollars. And so I proceeded to beat them about the face, breast, chest, neck, and head area. <clears throat> Good times. But that's why I don't work downtown anymore, because it's just a cesspool of crap. So much happier now with my life. Uh, Zachary Factory says, always happy to support you, brother. Good man, Wolf. Ah, Anunnaki Bro says, I use Magnetite for my torn ACL. Yeah, it does work, doesn't it? Yes. Yep, it does work. So, folks, that's it for tonight. Thank you for tuning in. To, or to, that's it tonight. This is daytime. All right, thank you for tuning in. Thank you to everybody who donated. We had a great time. Go back and re-listen to these encounters if you like. The stories, 
pretty crazy. We put them together and said, you know what, let's retell these people's encounters because they all kind of moved in the same direction. We stayed in Texas uh, for the most part. You know, we were just talking about these two different places in Texas. A lot of crazy stuff, man. Okay. But uh, Mike Turner, what's up, man? My brother from another mother. He's my African-American brother from another mother. He says, yeah, I remember you talking about that story within the first few seconds of, of you hitting the guy. The guy's probably unconscious before he hit the ground and landed on his neck wrong. Yeah, I think it was probably what happened, you know, um, or I hit him really hard and gave him, you know, whiplash. I don't know. I'll tell you a really, really weird story. Years ago, I hit a dude so hard at the club that several of my friends claimed that they saw his spirit leave his body and go, I'm not joking. This is not a funny ha chuckle house, I could probably get six, seven people to sit here and tell you that this really happened. Really happened. My wife's heard this story from various people. Um, and like his, like, it looked like a spirit or something come off of him. I didn't see it because I was busy doing what I was doing, but you know, it's, you know, it just like something came out of him and then went back in. And when we were thinking maybe it was his soul, like maybe he had a near-death experience. But back then, I wasn't going to go and ask the guy, hey, what was it like being out of your body after I hit you? You know, I wasn't going to, I didn't care. I didn't give a crap. He had just broken a woman's jaw. So, you know, got to do what you got to do, man. My job. Uh, I have broken my fist. So you can see the depressed knuckle right there. It's a boxer's fracture. And I've broken a lot of my fingers too. But you got to hit people a certain, a certain way. And I'm talking about being a fighter. You got to know how to hit people. And you can easily break wrists and feet, whatever. When I lift weights, I wear wrist wraps, which I would suggest to anybody doing anyway. I see guys in there, these young guys lifting all the time without the wrist wraps. Anthony, you do it. Very, very bad. You need to wear wrist wraps because when you get older, you're going to have problems with those. You're going to get these really, really thin fractures in your wrists, and you're going to be really uncomfortable and have arthritis. <clears throat> All right. Use Muay Thai. <laughs> yeah, Glade's creature. Exactly. Wow. That's interesting. Amy Krill says lots of vets on the Sean Ryan show reported having their conscious knocked and consciousness knocked out of their bodies from being concussed. Yeah, it's a real thing. And Anaki bro says, I want your advice on a workout routine. I could literally do a video. We could put it on Rumble or do something with it. I don't know where we would put it. That's the only thing. On Rumble, you can have multiple channel, multiple shows on one channel um, or one or multiple channels on one account. So I was thinking about doing one. We can just put it on there. And if you're not interested in it and you're just interested in the paranormal, you don't have to worry about it. So you could just go to Rumble and I could show you workout stuff and talk about supplements because according to uh, goofy old Anunnaki talking about the Bible, that goofy bastard, he goes and tells people that I'm crazy and I talk about uh, working out and supplements and fires and stuff and blah, 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 blah. And who cares? You know, so there I can just go. And if you want to hear about stuff like that, you can just go there and listen. And we can talk about stuff like that. And we can do have different channels for different stuff. So geopolitics in one, I could do a show on history. And of course, you know, the paranormal is a big part of my life and it's going to bleed over into that. And I even thought about it, too. I know a bunch about uh, true crime. So we could do something about that. We could do a show about true crime and I have to make a whole new show just because they're all right there. So there's the, the sky's the limit. There's a lot of things we can do. I do know a lot about a lot of subjects. I'm not trying to be a know-it-all or whatever, but I do retain a lot of knowledge. And the retaining it is what IQ really is. It's the ability to learn and retain it. I mean, that's just what it is. Lolo says Patreon. Oh, I did get some a, mess, a couple messages of you guys who've matured on the Patreon, uh, matured in the way that I mean, like you've reach what you, you know, the, the, the amount of time you need to get sent your stuff. I did get your emails and we're going to work on that and get that stuff mailed out to you uh, promptly. So what, what, what uh, the Patreon too, if, if it's a good, it's a great way to support the show. Um, we did lose a couple Patreon people recently and we haven't had a whole lot of new ones join for some reason. 
Um, but if you are interested in joining the Patreon, there's a 10, 20, 30, 40, $50 tier. Each one gives you more and more and more. Basically $10, you get a book from an autographed book from one of the authors that I'm friends with. And then $20, you get that plus a, sh plus a shirt. And $30, you get two books and a shirt. $40, you get two books and one of my books and a shirt. And then the, the $50 tier, you get two books from someone else. And then both of my books, autograph all of them. And then the uh, shirt. So that's basically what it is. 10, 20, 30, 40, $50 tier. Uh, I don't have the link on here, but you can go to Patreon uh, and, and on the show. You can go back to any of my past episodes where we're not using StreamYard and you can just find it there and you can go and join. Lisa says, I would love to hear about supplements. Yes, and I love to talk about stuff that's healthy and we can do a show when I go to Rumble. We'll do a show and we'll just we'll talk about that. You can ask health questions and I'll tell you what I do and I'll give you some advice about it. But I'm not a licensed professional uh, medicine, none of that, or, or a doctor. But I can give you some advice on what you can do um, and I can tell you what I take and how it works. That's pretty much what I can tell you. But uh, anyway. I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you to everybody who donated. Let me just read this off real quick. Josh Castro, Kim Longano, uh, Satyam Jaha, I believe how you say that. Zindi Monet, Josh Castro again. Joe Lozminski, <clears throat> Kate Hunter, Liberty 1776, Werewolf 5674, became a member. T. Toey, Big Kahuna Van, uh, and Zachary Factory. To everybody who donated, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You guys are the best. And I appreciate everybody who tuned in today. And good day. You have a good day. Wherever you're at, wherever you're from, be safe.